Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Groovy Hunter Smith. I also have the always special guest, Andrew Alderson. They call me the Razzle Dazzle. <laughs> and Austin Dick Wrangler Smith. I don't even want to start this one. I already started off on a good note. Uh, it's, it's a nice, it's a special occasion. It's episode 10. Do we um, cake? We don't get cake, Austin, unless you want to buy it. I mean, I'll you can go buy some cake. I need any excuse to buy a Dairy Queen ice cream cake. Today we're going to discuss Wolverine and the X-Men team bases, the strategy around them, and maybe a little bit of strategy against them, too, thrown in there. Uh, like their strategy against team yeah, bases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you have a point there. Let's. Uh, we're going to talk about Fear Itself Month 4, Odin, which is the LE, and we're going to talk about some new spoilers and a very big announcement that we had right late Friday. And <laughs> comics-wise, we're going to talk about the new DC Villains books that launched this month. <laughs> you guys read some of them, right? I've read some. I haven't read any of the Villains books, but I read Forever <laughs> Evil. Oh, alright. Well, we're going to talk about that, too. Um, first, let's get into some news. So, we had a very slow news week up until <laughs> freaking Friday when the world exploded right after I got done getting everything prepared for our podcast. Um, the first spoiler we had was really cool. It was Mage Knight, yep. which we're all definitely looking forward to. Um, Mage Knight Resurrection comes out, I think, next month. And they spoiled two pieces for it, both of which are goblins. This guy, the first guy is Goblin Pillager. He's not that great, but he has a cool His power. His ability is awesome. Yeah. He's 40 points, and he ignores characters on movement. Or he doesn't ignore characters, but basically he can move past without stopping. So he kind of has the move, the flying ability yeah. to move in without you know getting held up until he stops. He yeah, doesn't break. He doesn't break away automatically. That's the exact symbol they get flying. Um, his special attack power is super strength, and when he moves, he can pick up objects held by adjacent opposing characters, and he can pick up an object when he is holding one. And when he does so, he chooses one of the two objects and removes it from the game. That's awesome. So he can kind of steal your objects from your opponent's super strength pieces. Uh, he has a team ability called Ascendant. A character using this team ability modifies its attack value by plus one when marked with an one action token. That's pretty pretty it, cool. It incentivizes kind of pushing him, which is cool. He's, he's actually not bad. I mean, he has that cool power and he has willpower. Um, for uh, the first couple clicks, and then he gets uh, climb with the special power. Tie up. Everything's cool. Yeah, that's true. He could easily break away and walk around stealing all your opponent's objects. Well, the thing I like is since it's removed from the game and not destroy, it works on tank turrets and stuff too. Oh, so even indestructible items, if they're carrying them at the time, you snatch it right from their hand. That's cool. And late dial, he gets some flurry too. So he's pretty cute. And then we get oh, nope, I didn't mean to exit out of that. We got a kind of a bigger points. Basically, he seems like he's the goblin, the fourteen. king. Yeah, the goblin king. His name is Con Bone Spike. He's a little bit beefier than the go- than the baby goblin. This guy costs one hundred and seventy five points, but he has an endom and eight clicks of life. He has an epic action. Choose up to one opposing character with an action token for each two hundred points of the game's build total. Deal each of those one damage. That's so it's, okay. It's a mini Sauron, but it's not penetrating yeah. damage and it's not chance. And you don't yeah. have to roll it. <laughs> the reason he's really cool is his trait, Khan's Rampage. He can charge, and when an adjacent opposing character is KO'd and actions resolve, he can charge as a free action. And when he does, he can use exploit weakness. Ooh. See, and what's cool though is when an adjacent opposing character, that means he doesn't even have to, it doesn't have to be a KO, he does. Right. It's just someone else has to KO it. When it, uh, let's see. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It doesn't even have to be from his charge. It's kind of like the Legolas that triggers other people's Yeah, attacks. but that Legolas has to... Has I think to be the one who KOs. Yeah, he, that Legolas has to be the one that actually does the KO. Um, his attack power is Quake, and when he doesn't hit a character with an one action token, he gets to place a second action token on target. That's pretty sick, too. He has four damage on, on that as well. Then he gets three damage with Empower, three damage, and two with CCE. Like, he's a great dial. Yeah. The Quake's just hit. It's not even damage. So, I mean, like... That's a good option if you can't hurt somebody to just quake all nearby opponents. Yeah, put some action tokens on them, slow them down. Um, I, I think he's worth his 175 points. And he also has that Ascendant um, ability, and he has good attack values already. So yeah. I was going to point out that all these characters have the Orc keyword, which they started putting on a lot of the Orcs in Lord of the Rings sets. 
Um, and because he's an epic action, this is a great character to match up with a bunch of Lord of the Rings sets, mix in with them if you were playing Golden Age. Throw this big beefy dude in with some orc archers. Yeah, and, dude. Yeah. He, he looks pretty fun. I'm I'm actually really excited about Mage Knight. Uh, I am too. And the sculpt, these sculpts look pretty cool too. Yeah. The, especially that freaking axe. How many pieces are they going to be in this set? 25, um, I think? It was quite a bit. I can't remember off the top of my I head, but, it was like 40 but we'll check it out. Really? Yeah, it's, it's more than... Basically, I think you could buy a whole case and still not pull everything. From That's it. good. Because it's quite it's all a bit. Um, they also spoiled the Riddler, which I was happy to see. Oh as yeah, well. he's from Batman sixty six. His death trap bonus is equal to the last digit of the target character's point value. That's an interesting one. If Man. the last digit is zero, then his bonus is equal to four. So, I mean, if you're playing like a 79 point character, you're getting a freaking bonus of 9 and they're never going to get out of your damn death trap. Yeah, seriously. His de- uh, defense ability is super senses and he adds 1 to his result for each character that moved this turn, maximum of 6. If the d6 roll is a 1, he cannot evade. So basically, it's at putting best, in it's a, 5 out of 6. Yeah, yeah. so at best you 2 through 6 you evade. Um, that's pretty useful. And yeah. people will always underestimate stuff like that. Like one thing I love about Static shock, with his special super senses, Air he literally will. Static shock. His his, you have to roll. I you have to roll a one on your first super senses to fail it. Yeah, yeah. like you're almost always dodging the first attack that comes at you. That's why he's a good belt, a fun belt target is because they can't just try to smoke you. You're yeah. gonna dodge it. Yeah, unless they're precision strike. Um, his attack power is riddle me this. Give him a free action. Choose a KO'd character. And secretly turn its dial to any click other than number one. Tell your opponent the click number. <laughs> your opponent must guess the color of a power showing showing on that dial. Reveal that dial on the click number. If the pa- if there is a power and your opponent didn't guess correctly, Riddler gets plus one combat values this turn, and you return that dial to a KO click. So let's see. So. You KO. You have to pick a KO'd character. It doesn't say that it has to be there. It doesn't say it has to be your opponent's character. So I guess it could be yours too. And then you turn it to any click besides one, and they have to guess a color of a power. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to it's guess. It's been a rule. It's been a rule cluster screw up though, because there's a lot of care. Like people have been trying to discuss whether can you pick a click that has no colors and guarantee your combat values. Which, if I recall, they did rule that you can do that. Um, there's a lot of really there's weird nothing things. in the wording that would keep you from doing that. Yeah, I know. It, it's a fun one though. Like I really like that ability. It's just a rules mess. That's pretty cool. He costs <clears> sixty <throat> points. He has a uh, prob top dial and then perplex for the rest of it. Pretty much. He's pretty. He's pretty dang cool. I actually yeah. want to use him. Yeah, I do too. I, I'm definitely gonna try him at least once, even just for the. He's guessing. just a good support piece. That actually. outfit, son. Even just for the guessing game, like yeah, it's gonna uh, be fun. He's such a <laughs> great support piece. He's ridiculous. Um, let's see. We also got Yu-Gi-Oh! news. Oh, oh buddy. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a 24-count gravity feed, which we already kind of knew. There's going to be a starter set. Now, did it specify what else coming in the starter set? It did not. There is a. There's definitely a Dark Magician, a Blue Eyes White Dragon, and a Breaker the Magical Warrior. We don't know about the other three, but the sculpts look pretty cool, and we saw some of them at a thing on, at Jinkai. Um, the thing is, this set size is huge, though. It's seriously like sixty something figures total. It's crazy. That's and it's a it's gravity, gravity feed. feed. Oh my um, god! Someone supposedly, I want to check here while we have this. Open. Okay, so twenty four count gravity feed, fifty five characters to collect. Jesus, Jesus. including nine super rares and three chases. What? One of them better be a freaking red eyes black dragon. The three, oh, I'm sure they'll do it. It's based on the original series run. Oh, there needs to be five different parts of Exodia. That's, you have to play them all together. That's what everyone was hoping. The and you just instantly be. win hero clicks. We'll see. Like the three chases are probably <laughs> the Egyptian gods. I think that's kind of a given. Because if you're gonna put chases in Yu-Gi-Oh, that's like the best choice for. If them. Relinquish is not in the set, I'm gonna be pissed. We'll see. That's what everyone's talking about. They want like really cool fusion effects, like. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon as a super rare, and if you have three of them, you can merge them together into them or something. I crazy. think uh, if I had to take a guess at the super rares, Gaia would be one. Um, oh, yeah. Gaia's pretty dope, too. Blackluster Soldier. Blackluster Soldier, probably. There's also even going to be an OP kit. Dang. Yeah. What? They're, uh, they're going all out and supporting this, which is crazy. Well, I mean, it is their own game, too. You know, Yu Gi Oh! is their game. How many weeks so. are we going to be no, playing? WizKids is, isn't who controls Yu Gi Oh! Konami, Konami does. 
Yeah, but doesn't WizKids make the cards? No, Konami makes the, the card game and everything. Huh. Oh, um, that's my bad then. I thought they were directly... No, this is just them seeing a really good marketing opportunity. <laughs> um, let's see if it says exactly what's going to be in the OP kit. It's hard to read this. Um, it's the same typical you know, distribution as far as how many kits you can order. Yeah. Oh, 10 maps... Three limited edition figures. What? Three copies of each. Oh, three copies each of one figure. So it's just going to be one LE. Um, and that's it. So just one LE in maps. No, it's three LEs. Three limited. No, yeah, but three copies, three copies, copies each of one figure. So three, it's just, e- three limited edition copies. Er, no, three, three copies of one no, figure. No, it says the first line. It says three limited edition figures. Yeah, but it means three of one specific one. Then what would it say? Tell me that. Trust me, that's how they do it because... On the other packs, say there was three LEs, it would say three copies it each says of these three copies figures. Each of one. Yeah, that's so confusing. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I know it, it. It is the first time you read it, but that's how they do it because I I always open our OP kits up. Um, <clears throat> they we got some Superman and Legion of Superhero news today too, or this week too. We got some really yeah, awesome had, sculpts, and actually we saw this. this guy at Gen Con, this guy right here in the um, chair with the. Scepter. He was with the Batman sixty six stuff. No, no, no. You're Unless it's raw. Unless it's the same sculpt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, same okay. Sculpt, so basically, they reused the sculpt. It, basically, exactly. Um, the same sculpt. Yeah, because we we had heard about this game trade solicit last week, but it finally hit the web, so we could actually read the info on it. And they they did some more. Like a few things got announced. There's a picture of the toy man on there with uh, his desk. Oh yeah. And you can attach the toys to it, like the Cape Crusader attaches stuff. Um, That's yeah. awesome. And the toys are like the bats. They come in packs. I see um, that Black Mana. Black Mana looks <laughs> sick, dude. That sculpt. It's New 52 sculpt. Or suit Black Mana. There's a Lex, a Giganta. I'm not sure who this guy is with the hand, blue on his hands. It's probably somebody from Legion. DC Punisher. <laughs> Mr. Miracle. <laughs> or Terrific or whoever. Oh, Mr. Miracle. Um, I'll link these on the podcast so you guys can look at them if you haven't seen them, but... Um, the Black Mana and Lex and uh, Giganta are probably from the starter set, which is going to be Legion of Doom. Or from the, the Fast, Fast Force. Forces, which is going to be Legion of Doom. Yeah, they're already in Which is what I'm way more excited for yeah, than seriously. the main set. Um, it's very rare that you're more excited for a starter. For a Grundy better be in there, man. Uh, hopefully he'll at least be in the he, main I set. I think he was announced for it. I'm not sure, though. I, I, I hope he's at least in the main set. So the other major news that they sprung on us at the end of the day friday and, oh my and i like i got lucky i was on here clicks.com literally like right when it got posted yeah and it's I, very rare you miss stuff before i get it because i'm literally on it nonstop. i started the thread on hc realms actually and it and they jacked it from me and made it like the official yeah. story and i was like what happened to my thread i couldn't even find it anymore because they jacked it and it didn't show up on my stuff anymore <laughs> yeah, and i was like what happened um but the news is that there is going to be a hero clicks watch list now we're going to make this a main topic next week. If they had told us this earlier in the week last week, then we would be talking about it today. But I already had, you know, we already had our yeah. stuff planned out, and they sprang they sprung this on us kind of last second. So this will be a main topic next week. So we won't we won't talk about it in s- super detail today, but we will kind of go over the basics. What they're going to do is they have this list of about eight things. The things are team bases. Spiral, Heroes for Hire, Utility Belt, specifically Prep Time, the GCPD ATA, and the GCPD Cruiser Pilot Ability. Batmite and Brother Voodoo. Batmite's, you're my hero. Yeah, Batmite's uh, hero and Let Me Help, so two of his powers. And Brother Voodoo's My Spirit Possesses, which is the Mind Control. So... It doesn't necessarily that they say that they're going to for sure change these or all of them. It just says that they are on a watch list and a determination will be made as to if any change is required. It is important to note that while changes up to and including errata, refinement, and or banning are all possible, so too is no change at all. So like it's saying, there's a possibility they won't get changed. Yeah. There's a possibility they could go from either not getting changed at all to getting banned all completely. The yeah. only thing I can really see them doing, uh, banning completely, would be working together. Would be team bases and maybe Heroes for Hire. 
I but, think they'll probably errata the working together. Yeah, I think they're better off either not changing some of these or very slightly eroding. Like, Heroes, working together, no doubt, needs change. Yeah. Yeah. Heroes for Hire, no doubt, needs some kind of small change to keep it in check. And other than that, the Spir- other... Spiral, spiral needs some adjustment. The thing about Spirals is, it, like we said, it might not affect the meta as much as everybody's scared of. It will seriously affect um, big, like, local having, games, though. Having played against a Spiral with someone that can hypersonic through the portal like Ghost Rider can, though... I will say it creates a very, very unfun game. It definitely needs a slight change, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, And GCPDATA, I don't know that it needs changed. If anything, though, just maybe cut it to two squares instead of four. Yeah. I I definitely don't think they should make the point cost higher because that will really hurt. Because GPD, you have to run a lot of pieces. And if you have to pay extra points on each one, that's going to hurt a lot. It's going to hurt you a lot more than those two squares is going to hurt you. Definitely. But um, we'll go over these next week and we'll talk about if we think they need change to what degree and what are some actual possible solutions. And we'll be uh, if you guys want to post in your opinions, you know, on either email or Twitter or Reddit or whatever. Like, th- there's already a Reddit thread where we're talking about it. If you guys want to kind of chime in and give your two cents on how you would fix some of these things, um, I would say that the vast majority of people that we've seen are reacting to this with massive applause and personally I, I am too yeah i mean it's a really good sign you know we're starting i was kind of at that point where i was getting a l- tiny bit worried about the the overall direction of the game and the fact that there it, it's not getting any better like over the last 18 months more so even just the last year Definitely. like i feel like vehicles were pretty good but they didn't outright break the game yeah. but Teenagers. after batman you know after yeah starting with with the prep time, honestly, because prep time is a little really it's good. It's ridiculous. It ruins the point of the belt to me. I don't know that they need to, that it absolutely has to be changed, but it is pretty freaking good. And it was definitely shaping the meta it, significantly when it first started. Yeah, and it's like, with the belt, the thing is, I feel like people are way more likely to use the belt just for prep time than they are for the belt's objects and tricks. Yeah, it, it does remove the spirit of the belt, that's for sure. But, anyways... We'll talk about these in detail next week. But if you, like I said, if you guys want to chime in on email or Reddit or Twitter and, and give some of your what you would think would be good, you know, tweaks, or if you think they shouldn't be fixed at all, just chime in with your opinion, and um, we'll talk yeah, about all of that next week. There was one more piece actually that I forgot to mention. There was a, or did we talk about the Star Trek last week? No, not this nope, one. This one's no, new. No one. There's a Tactics Series Three. IKS Toral, which piece, I love. This which is a, cool. It's a Klingon piece. It looks like, and there's a Klingon team ability, and we haven't talked about Klingon. The the Klingon team ability is actually one that I wish they would put on something in the main Hero Click set, and it's actually what got me to where I wanted to play this set was seeing how they did some of this stuff. But the uh, the IKS Tor- IKS Toral, it's 125 points Klingon Romulan warrior. Its trade is once per game choose a keyword possessed by an opposing ship. IKS Toro can use mind control and modifies its attack by one when it does, but may only target ships with that keyword. Which is cool right off the bat. I mean, mind control in this set isn't that common. Not um, at all. I don't think we've seen it on any yeah, of the um, pieces. And as a trade especially, where you can just keep using it. At 125, it's a 7 deep. Um, it's got blades towards the end. It's got energy explosion with 2 bolts, 7 range, flying and um, It's damage powers leadership outwit. Um, it's just a solid piece for 125, and it's a common. Um, it's a fun piece. Um, Klingon, the Klingon TA, for those who don't know, when an opposing ship KOs a ship with this team ability, all other ships using this team ability modify their attack value by one until the end of your next turn, uncopyable. So if you all of a sudden, this could be the swing you need. Like if two of your ships are on bottom dial and not that useful, and they get finally get picked off, it could push your big ship up a little bit and give him that big hit he needs to take the game. Um, it, it's a fun piece. Like I like it. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Especially if you ran it with a bunch of like small, tiny point pieces that are getting killed all yeah. the time. That's pretty cool. Especially and, with a mind control piece where you're going to end up with plus three attack probably with that extra plus one on there. This is from the main set, looks like. Um, we're also going to talk about Odin in our new section, which is the LE for month four. And the reason we're going to talk about him is because we just did month four. And, and he's ridiculous. And he is pretty goddamn cute. He's pretty cute. To say the least. 
Onan has two different point levels, and he honestly plays very differently depending on which point level oh, you yeah, play him on. His 350 point level is more of, it's like a primary attacker, but also support. And the reason is he has four clicks of a special movement power and four clicks of a special attack power. The movement power gives him hypersonic, but he does not have his range value when doing Jesus. so. Jesus, and he's a nine range. So he only has an eight movement, but still, that is a 17 square swing he has. He can move four, shoot nine, and move four again. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. His with attack a power six damage. Yeah, yeah, with hitting hard and power cosmic too. Uh, his attack power at the beginning of your turn, choose a, a standard attack power. Odin and friendly characters, hundred fifty points or less, can use that power Jesus. this turn, and that's a free action. Oh my god! You know what I would use on him? I'd choose precision strike just for him. I mean, you, you could, don't need an action to use it. You can hypersonic swing and. Guarantee they can't use super senses against yeah. your six attacks. So basically every turn, he's getting to pick whatever attack power he wants. And the rest of your team is getting to pick... You, you 150 know, or less, You can yeah. give them whatever you want. I mean, that's just awesome. Horde tokens he with hits, precision. He hits really hard already because he has outwit, six damage, and then another outwit, five, and then five perp, four perp. So like I said, at this point dial, he plays totally different than he plays on his 175 point dial which is Running Shot and Pulse Wave for two clicks with four damage and a special damage power. If Odin has one or more tokens, modify the attack value of other friendly characters that are 150 points or less by plus one. If Odin has two tokens, modify the damage value of other friendly characters within eight squares by one. It's just sick. Within eight squares, like that's hard to do. Yeah. (laughs) And then he... Mid dial, he picks up some running shot psychic blast it's with prob. Yeah, I like his top click though. Running shot pulse wave with I mean, a four damage. That's is nothing, nothing to, to scoff at. Yeah, there's nothing to sneeze at, especially with that special power that then helps the rest of your team. And then on his very last click, he picks up the crazy hypersonic again. Um, he's got good keywords too. I mean, like Asgardian ruler, um, warrior, um, all that fun stuff. He's just I like him a lot. Like he's. I- I love him. He's my favorite LE so far. Yeah, and he's what I want from an LE. I want big, expensive, splashy pieces that are fun to play. Playing this guy in a big one, man. I wish I would have had him when we did when I did that as Guardian team the other day. Yeah, him and Thor. God, he would have been so fun. Um, Do you think he'll affect the meta at all? Well, he's too expensive at three fifty to affect it. Period. But at one seventy five, I wouldn't say it's impossible that he would. I mean, Um, he's a decent piece. I don't necessarily... If he had this attack power at 175, where he gives everyone a choice of power or something, Yeah, I could see him definitely doing it. I don't know necessarily that... He is the, still... Yeah, but think about this. If you can get him out to running shot pulse wave, and then as soon as you're done with that, the rest of your team, no matter where they are, notice the attack... Plus va- one attack, yeah. The attack value doesn't require within eight squares. The rest of your teams get plus one attack. If you were, like you said, if you ran him with a bunch of horde tokens or something... Yeah, I don't see him being meta, but I could see some fun teams, especially as guardian teams, abusing that. Um, I would. I think it'd be fun on larger point games running him with that Thor LE, like Drew said. Um, run that Thor LE, who already has a really high attack value in that special blades. Yeah, but the only bad thing about running him with Thor is Thor's not going to get any of these buffs. He's yeah. Oh, much. he's over 150. Yeah, yeah, true. I just meant playing him with a just a big ass guardian team that are all like 150 or less. But I, I, yeah, I don't think he's likely to. I'm just saying I definitely wouldn't say no. There's no way. It's definitely possible. Yep. That he could end up being a solid, a really solid. It could piece. happen. Um, I, I think he's great. I'm excited about him. And his sculpt looks freaking. Oh sick yeah, his sculpt too. is sexy. Um, <clears throat> so let's move into what we played today. We just got back from the dugout where we did. Fear Itself Month 4, where we gave out Odin's, and um, we had pretty good turnout. 14 people, I think. Yeah, it was just funny, because we're all sitting there, and there's six of us, and you're like, well, we're going to double Fear Itself, and all of a sudden, like, eight more people walk in the door. It's like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it was, was just funny. I was getting everybody's boosters ready and selling them, and then just more people kept coming up, coming <laughs> up, and coming up. I was like, where the hell are all these people coming from? Um, we had a good time, though. Oh, yeah, it was fun. Um, Harry ended up winning, and Scott Scott got second. Shout out to Scott, loyal fan and listener, and good I friend. Love you, Scott. I'd like to get Scott on the podcast Warriors sometimes, here. maybe if we can talk him into it. Um, and then we did a fellowship for one as well. And um, 
we did double fear of self today because we had enough left over from the last couple months. So I ended up letting us run 500 points, which in our games were still over pretty quick. Yeah. Because with hammers, yeah, hammers, it, it's over fast. Yeah. I let people use a maximum of five, which they could have five if they have Scotty's hammer from the pack. And uh, good times were had. I finally pulled a super rare. Only took me 16 fear itself boosters to pull one super rare. About damn time. I pulled anger. I still need Drac, so I'm going to try to trade this anger for Drac. But I'm just happy that I pulled one. That mathematically, c- cosmically, it was impossible for me to not pull I know, seriously. Pull a I super wouldn't rare. say that. There's people who, like... I still should have, what, pulled, like, what, four by now? <laughs> yeah. Five, almost five by now. Yep. But, you know, I'll settle for my one because I'm not a greedy person, you know? Uh-huh. Um, so I have a new strike uh, streak going, which is with Wolverine the X Men. I have five boosters so far, nothing better than a rare. Not that impressive of a streak yet, but I- I'll be working on it'll, it. It'll get there. <laughs> um, I played monk. I played seven figures. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and- I looked over at you and Ricky's <laughs> board, and I just saw like the swarm of figures, and I was like, "The hell is going on?" I played there? a troll, a Thul Society priest, a Monkey King. Both of the Iron Fists. Um, Red Shield? No. Rizo, Kodo, and I'm forgetting somebody. Did you say it's wrong? Oh, Black Widow. Oh, okay. And um, I did okay. I had some horrible rolls all together, like, overall in all my games. I crit missed, like, six times today. Um, that was my first time playing Rizo, and actually, I, I he was a must for me whenever I pulled him. I was like, I've pulled him a few times... Never played him yet. I definitely going to play him He's this time. He's a fun piece. The, like the only problem is I definitely see what you guys have been saying about he becomes a huge target. It's like everybody, want, they're so worried about him, he never gets to do what he wants yeah. to do because he gets popped. And it's hard to hide him, too. I mean, I, I tried hiding him, and then the last game, Scott gave um, the giant reach hammer to, Grey Goss hammer to um, Tanneris, and then just shot over top of my guys who were blocking Rizo and <laughs> smoked him. And I was like, God dang it, I... Rizo's never going to get to kick butt, but my second game, I did get him to top click, and my goodness. He's good. He's like flurry with six damage outwit. And, and, and at the same time, though, um, if everybody. you have him in these larger games like 500, you could almost take advantage of that and use him as bait really well, too. And he's, he's like, what, 105? He, it's like 107 or 8, yeah. He's not, he's not over 110. Um, he was fun. Black Widow's pretty fun. I was rolling crappy with her. I never rolled a 4 to 6 on her blades. Um, well, Iron Fist it, both uh, did work, of course. What I was doing, and it actually worked out really well, was using Dual Society Priest, and you know how you have to push him on the prob. I was just using every turn he was power action dropping hammers on people. That's what I was using my troll for today. To quickly push him on the um, prob. Um, but all three of my games, just for fun, I, I gave the troll um, running shot and was throwing objects across the map because no, none of my opponents expected it. Um, that was really fun. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, because you see this little troll who has zero range, and then you pick up a light and throw it for eight squares. <laughs> it was just a blast. Those trolls are just so goddamn good Gosh, for their people points. people really do not realize how good they are. Um, overall, of course, the Iron Fist both kicked butt, but I just could not hit a roll to save my life on most of my games. But I had a fun day. What did you guys play? Um, my polls were kind of met at first, but I realized I pulled Mock. And I've, I've seen that Mock like a thousand times, and I really wanted to play him. So I threw him on the team, and that took up half my team right there at 240. I threw uh, the Miss Marvel, because I haven't played her yet with the ranged blades and everything. Um, uh, Asgardian Troll, and um, what was my last? Monkey King. Uh, what I started doing was I started uh, staggering my pieces. I'd move everybody up, Monkey King would carry the troll. Beginning of turn, I'd drop a hammer to Mach, and then I'd power action the troll to drop a hammer to Miss Marvel. So my two main attackers immediately on turn two have their hammers and they're ready to go. Um, mock Mock's trade is so good though. Like, I used it to maximum effectiveness today, and it screwed some people over. Um, anyone within four squares can be given a second a non-free action if they already have a token. So what you do is um, everyone would move up and they get ready to drop their hammers if I went first, and I would either not drop Mock a hammer and I'd move them up a little more to where they couldn't be given hammers and they had to clear next turn. Yeah. And it just it screwed up a lot of people. And that map, honestly, the map today. Which did you play the? Uh, I played both sides. I liked them both. I especially liked I like the, the one with the, one with the little bits of blocking. I liked a lot. That one was okay. Um, 
I liked the the other side a lot. The where there's like ele- two squares of elevated yeah. all the way around the yeah. outside. I like that one too. I gotta They're say, both good maps. this month this month's maps I think were probably I my think, favorite so far. I think next month is the water it one. It is. So that'll be oh, fun. Jesus. Yeah. Um, my first game against Harry, I totally was reminded why I hate that Dracula with a burning passion. Um, Charge Flurry Exploit Five is. Uh, he's just a nasty piece. Um, what Harry started doing was he got Drac up on me, and as soon as he did, he's every turn he'd drop hammers to him just to trigger his steel energy. He wasn't even picking them up. Yeah. And once he's full click, flurry for five damage, and he's just smack, smack. And mock mocks 240 points, but only eight clicks deep. And although they're all in vol and at some imperv at the top, with exploit five, like you can just smash him down dial, and he's... Dead. He's gone. He's like worthless. He picks up like in cap. So he popped him. He popped Miss Marvel, and it was from there on out. It turned into my giant Asgardian troll. After I tossed him Graythoths, throwing objects at people for the walls. Um, my second two matches went a lot better though. Um, one, I played Mock to his full effectiveness. I got my hammers out in good timing this time. Um, and gosh, Scotty's hammer like that's just the best hammer in that set. Like it's ridiculous. Miss Marvel with that hammer, she's got an 11 range running shot normally at 6 range. Well, everyone forgets she's a flyer for one. That's a 6 range charge, and if I give her the book, assign the book, and it hasn't turned at all, that's a 7 range charge, and she's got super strength with exploit now with Scotty's hammer. So I would set her up behind blocking, and they'd count out and be like, oh, she can't reach. Assign book, fly her over some blocking, pick up a heavy object, and just smack somebody for freaking six exploit right immediately. It, it was ridiculous, and I murdered some games like that. Um, overall, like, my team was a little weird. I was happy with how it turned out in the end. Um, definitely got some good play out of the book, and that's always fun. Oh, you know what I ended up doing today that was really cool and useful? And I, it just kind of hit me. Um, me and Scott were playing, and like I said, he had running shot, smoked Kodo. Yeah. Uh, all three of Scott's pieces had freaking impervious or invul, <laughs> and I I didn't have anybody who had exploit. So only Scotty's hammer is the only way I'm getting through his dampeners. So what did I ended up doing was doing the ability you can do on the book. If you play five or more hammers, you can give a and you have I think you, you have to hammers. have it's drive. four hammers. If you I have four hammers I gave out. a power action to somebody to swap Scotty's over to Rizo so that Rizo could yeah. then exploit and heal off of that and I was like that's pretty damn useful and all of a sudden it makes the Thules more useful because then you have a cheap 21 point character to keep power actioning to do that with Yep. Um, I, I forgot about that really. Like I'm now that I know that I think I'm going to abuse the crap out of that in the next two months Drew what would you play what was your team um, I got some good pulls uh, I got the Doctor Strange um, uh, Tartarus um, Tartar sauce. Gosh, we saw so many Tartarus today. There were like six of them. Well, it's Tannerous. Tannerous. Tartarus. It's whatever. tartar sauce, but it's Tannerous. Whatever, dude. I don't care. <laughs> it's tartar sauce. Anyway, uh, I played. Uh, well, I played Rizo Koto, um, Monkey King, and uh, who else was the last one? Uh, not a day. Oh, goes, Iron Fist. Not a day goes by we don't play Monkey King. He's just so good. <laughs> not a fear itself goes. But yeah, by. Iron Fist. <laughs> The common one. So I had a pretty good team, I thought. Yeah, it's a damn good team. It's a damn good team. I, I got... I went 2-0 and until I lost. <laughs> so, first game I played, uh, I think it was... I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was Kurth and Titania and Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel killed, I think it was, like, Monkey King so fast. <laughs> like, yeah, she's, was, she's scary, dude. But I have yet to pull her, and she's only, like, an uncommon, isn't she? Yeah, she's, yeah, only, she's the last I uncommon she's I need. Uncommon. I just kept missing rolls, but it got down to the point where uh, Tanaris was... Tanaris? Is that his name? Tanaris, yeah. Tanaris, yeah. All right, because I... Let me, let me look it up just to double check, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Tanaris? I'll call him Tanaris, because... It's Tartar Sauce. Just call him Tartar Sauce. Okay, Tartar Sauce... Got to the point tartar where he sauce had, slathered all over everything. Yeah, it's Tanerous. Okay, Tartar Sauce got to the point where he had Imperv, Shape Change, and Super Senses. So what? basically, yeah, his third click. He can't have all three, though. He has Imperv and Shape Change. That's what and he, he gets did. Super Senses from the book. Uh, wait, how'd you get. Oh, you mean it was showing on yeah. the dial? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty and dumb. And it does show a lot on that dial. That's dumb. <laughs> but proceed. 
You were like, how can you do that? I was That's like, just he, evil. I was like, you can't have imperv and super senses at the same time. But yeah, from the book, so yeah. <laughs> anyway. He's so sick for giving mocks. God. I gave him mocks. He's so sick. And he made people suffer. <laughs> Gosh, he's he's so good in this set, particularly. Um, I had, So I had two penetrating psychic blasters. I had an outwit with Rizo Kodo. I had a perp with Strange. And I had... Like, Rizo Kodo. Uh, let's talk about Rizo Kodo for a second, because he's actually really, really good. Um, I gave him Graythos a lot. To make him a giant. To make him a giant. I was doing that too, but he still kept getting shot. I mean, that's the problem, is he yeah. can still get shot. But, like... He's stealth, doesn't he? The he doesn't was, start with it. He has to get hit oh, onto yeah, that's it. Right. The and thing, in fear itself, if you get hit, you pretty much get one shot all yeah, the time. Seriously, it's ridiculous. But, but anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah, you give him Graythos, he charges in, and he can still like outwit it at the end of turn because he isn't adjacent. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, second game I played against a new kid. Uh, one. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. I guess he played mock and he. I guess he didn't really know how to use Mock properly. Yeah, Mock, the thing that I kept forgetting about my first game that I abused my second one was Plasticity Running Shot. Yeah. Um, I dropped him Skirm's Hammer so he could ignore characters, too. Yeah. And that's then he'd get you charge did. and you just keep him away, but you keep him within you, four. You wouldn't give Mock Mock's Hammer because that would be pointless. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, because Mock already has Mock's Hammer. And <laughs> but yeah, third game was against Harry and. <sighs> Screw that, Dracula. Uh, yeah, I, I love you, Harry, but I hate you for the Dracula. It's not his fault. Oh wait, it had. I didn't realize Dracula had flurry yeah. at starting out. Yeah, that's why he wins. Stealth. Jesus, that's why he Charge. wins because you get in and you charge flurry, and he charged flurry monkey king, and I haven't had to. Play I pushed. Him yet. I pushed Yo, monkey king basket. to drop a hammer so he'd get on shape change, so I'd at least have a chance. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, Drac is just too good and. And leadership at 220 is amazing, yeah, too. So. I wouldn't mind trying him in Constructed, actually. He looks pretty good. He's The uh, Legion of Monsters team, or a monster team. Yeah, he's on my team for my that. Does he have monster? Yeah, of course oh, he has yeah. monster. Dude. Play him with a moment or two, you know? Uh, I want to say or five. Five. Actually, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the ideas in Drew's head are just swimming around. Um, did we play Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, we played Wednesday. What was the team build? It was the... Anything goes... Ah, uh, yes. I think uh, 500 points. Wednesday at Game Preserve was 500 points, anything goes, and uh, we went all out. Yeah, my team was hilarious. Why don't you start with your team? So I decided that all this shit talking of Thule Society priests was beginning to get to me, so I decided I was going to try to find a way to break the suckers. So I built a mystical team with nine of them, Trinson at 200 points, Enchantress at 50, and Switch at 50. And I would copy Mystics, of course, with their wild card. I'd get plus 12 to map roll, being Mystics' theme team, and I'd pick Realm of Death. And I would just line them up in the corridors and make people eat their way through them. And it, it was a fun team. Um, I, I, I like team bases at 200. I, I talked about this earlier. I like team bases at 200. I don't enjoy them at higher. I feel like they're, they're more fun lower down when you only get, like, two actions. I guess they're more justifiable. Um, my... My first match, or my first match is like it was other team bases out the wazoo and stuff like that. Yep. Um, There's I, a couple of heroes for higher teams. There I went was, against uh, two other Trinity Ascends. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of Trinity Ascends. I played a 300 against a 300 point Trinity Ascend, 200 point Shuma team, uh, a 500 point Justice League team base. My second opponent wasn't playing anything that was stupid good, but he's a, he's a new guy. Yeah, I. Uh, I went up against a Shuma Trin team, which was not fun whatsoever to deal with. Um, Tr- Trinity Ascent is just so good. And, like, it's so versatile at the same time. Um, I had a lot of fun with that base, though. Um, I'd recommend if you have access to playing one, try it out at least once, because it is a really fun piece. Especially at 200 on a Mystics team. Um, the strategy worked out well sometimes. Um, my first two games, like, there were some people who did eat some Mystics from those guys trying to get to me. Um, in, in, oh, I gave Enchantress the belt. Enchantress with belt is amazing. Like, I didn't realize how good she'd actually be with the belt. Um, I rolled her onto plus two one time, and she was on Pinsai. Oh, man, I blasted, I blasted Trinsen for the win that way. 
<laughs> Please uh, never say transcend for the win. Was that a, I think that was win. a rap. Rare rap by Austin Smith. A blast of dead transcend. Oh, oh, God, dead Hunter, transcend. Hunter played, a, I don't know, what was it? Some sort of so, jerky Imperial Guard team. I was, my original thought was, I'm definitely going to try out a team base because I, I, my goal is to play all of them once. And I'm almost done with the Teen Titans basis, and I've been wanting to play Shi'ar. I love Shi'ar, period. It, not just the team, but, like, the Shi'ar, period. Like, the characters. And I thought about playing Shi'ar Imperial Guard at 500 points, and then, like I told them, I realized I have a soul. Because I looked at this thing, <laughs> and it is really stupid. Okay, here's essentially what you can do with Shi'ar at 500 points. Beginning of the game, first part of your five action. You use their once per turn power action to place once them, per game. or once per game power action to put them wherever you want. That's not in a starting area. So you place them next to your opponent, and you place them so that when you eventually pulse wave, you will only hit the other team base. Yeah. So you place them. Then you use your pulse wave with the twelve attack, six damage, and your prop control from your team base. Then you use Gladiator's asset dial, which starts out at flurry. So you're you have already pulse waved for six. Flurried for 12. And power action. Man. And then now you get two more chances to either hit once and run or just hit twice and pretty for much six kill damage. for six each time. And um, then <laughs> they have outwit. What's, so what's you could run away. Four, what's their first four defensive clicks there, Hunter? Yeah, invincible with an 18, four 17 clicks speed. And power cosmic. You can't outwit anything on them. They don't care. So I was like, I am not that douchey. So I'm going to play them. At, I. I'll have more fun playing them with other Shi'ar pieces. Yeah. So I ended up playing them at 300 points. Um, they s- don't start off with Pulse Wave. They start off with Hypersonic and only 4 damage. Oh, darn. But they do have a special... <laughs> oh, darn. Yeah, they do have a special damage power. They get plus 1 attack value um, for... Plus 1 for each opposing character that was hit by the guard oh, earlier no. this turn. So that kicks in as soon as you hit. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So as soon as you hit once, really? it pops up to 11. So what I ended up doing, I ran them with Lalandra, which I def- if you re- I absolutely highly recommend if you ever play Shi'ar team, play Lalandra. Um, if The reason is, a couple reasons. Number one, Lalandra's trait. Other characters, friendly characters with the Shi'ar keyword within eight squares get plus one attack values. Other friendly characters with the Imperial Guard keyword within eight squares get plus one damage. So the Shi'ar Imperial Guard base and everybody who pops off of it gets both plus one attack oh and plus gosh. one damage. But the main reason was her attack power. Give Lalandra a free action. Choose a friendly character not within six squares. That character can use sidestep this turn. If the character has Shi'ar or X-Men, you may give her a power action instead and then place that character adjacent to her. So what I was doing was Shi'ar goes out, kicks ass, bring her back to Lalandra. I would do that once per game because I didn't want to do it the whole game because that would be really douchey. <laughs> so, and not only that, she has a leadership, and once it hits and succeeds, she can also remove an action token from an adjacent friendly character with the Shi'ar keyword, and that regardless of point values. So I was removing tokens from the the team base too. So this team was just bonkers. And then I played my favorite gravity feed piece ever created, two of the Shi'ar guard, two of the greatest hairstylists ever. Twenty seven points with charge, super strength, and already well, have and two damage. Get the plus one attack, plus one damage from her. Too, that's what I'm they? saying. They were hitting for five with twenty seven point piece. Was hitting for five. Uh, that's so stupid. Every game they were freaking killing people. And then I actually didn't run Oracle on the base. I played her off of it. And then I, for one, I couldn't afford it. Yeah. But for two, I wanted her so so that I could barrier the team base in to make them safe. But Imperial Guard doesn't lose anything by not having all the pieces on it. Is the other thing. No, like that's, me and you had to talk about that. Yeah, because... Imperial Guard and her. I, I kept it on Gladiator's Flurry the whole time because when do you not want Flurry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. You know I mean? Really, team base especially where you yeah. can use a close combat action to smack two people. So, I it was just awesome. Um, I had a blast playing this team. I went three and zero. Surprise. I had a but oh there was one more piece oh never mind it's because the Oracle was separate so I had been wanting to try out Warstar a lot too so I ended up popping him off the base a lot just to try him out and man what a beast he is oh I love Warstar and the reason he another reason he was so good is because at the 300 point level where I was playing it he starts off on a 9 charge 11 super strength with 4 damage and invincible and what's the most common damage you take when you get hit by invincible like usually 2 
Yeah. Or maybe one. I try to pick for two to knock him off it. Either way, he gets hit, and then he still stays on Invincible, and he gets freaking Pulse Wave. Uh, every time I would charge in, get the bus from Lalandra, hit for seven, and then Pulse Wave again with the bus from Lalandra because... He's within eight squares, but his pulse oh wave doesn't hit her. Yeah. So he was just going to freaking town. It was such a fun I team. love his ability on the asset dial, too. The free solo adventure one, where you get to pop somebody. Yeah, his solo. ability is good, and and but and I thought about keeping him on just for that, but like I said, I ended up staying on Gladiator, so I was like, screw it. I want to try out Warstar, and he was a boss. He's 177 points, though, so if you played, I mean, you got to be careful. If you pop him off, you can't pop anybody else off, but... He's a piece, though, that I would like to play just alone. Like, his dial alone is a blast. I'm definitely going to be trying out all the Shi'ars, like, a lot. Um, just that team base, man. Shi'ar, we're going to talk about later today, but my goodness, it was too good. Um, team bases in, in general are just, they really need change. Too good. Oh, we had fun. Um, that kind of segues us into our main topic today, which is reviewing the Wolverine and the X-Men team bases not only talking about which ones are good and why they're good, but we're going to, for each one, list what we feel is the most efficient dial option for them. And also, what are the best figures on that specific team base to pop off during a game? Yeah. Like, um, and then also, what are some good support pieces to run with the team base if you want to play the team base cheap and then play some other, you know, theme, play like a theme team with them? And if we fill each, you know, which team base will affect the meta, what's the best overall, you know, we'll talk about, we'll go over all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> first one I want to talk about is X-Men Blue, which we've already seen affect the meta. Three of them have affected the meta, haven't yeah. they? <laughs> yeah. Um, the X-Men Blue is really good Dude, overall. God, the top click. It's really good overall, yeah, but see, that's the 600-point dial. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. 600-point dial, they get running shot, ex, uh, penetrating, um, invincible. invincible, and prob control. They are really good at 6. Um, they're 500-point dial, or they're... Um, I like their sprinkles of invincible throughout their dial. I feel like their 300-point dial is the best for the points. It just gives you a lot of clicks. It gives you prop control with them all on top and sidestep. And the main thing you're going to be doing with them is popping people off a lot. Um, they also have a special attack power, the Wolverine Cannonball. You give them solo adventure, and then you get to place him within eight squares in line of fire, and he gets an ad one additional free action this turn. So he gets to basically flurry bla or blades, and then he gets to do it again for himself, yeah. you know, or whatever. So that's what I mean. And then combo with the Wolverine that's on that base, which I'm sure we're going to get to. Have you seen? That's what I'm talking about, yeah. is you're throwing the Wolverine. But I'm saying he's got a special ability too, doesn't he? Oh, wait, no, the, I'm thinking of his, uh, the asset dial that he has. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you throw him off the dial, or off the base, then you're not going to get his, yeah. his asset dial. But, um, <clears throat> personally, I, I think they're the best for their points at 300 because, yeah, you're right. Those four clicks are good, but are they 300 yeah, points? Yeah, they're not worth 300 They're points. not worth 300, and their 200-point dial is pretty solid, too. Yep. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're the best... For only 100 points more, you're getting those four clicks right there. I like their 200 for team building, though. Like, that's what I like 200-point team bases for, is they're not your entire force. Like, their 200 has that special trait where they can give them a power action to buff all X-Men for plus one attack. Like, it's not a big deal. But, like, a 200-point figure, okay, I'm going to buff every... If I'm playing a larger team, like, let's say 500, 600-point X-Men team, and I've got a ton of smaller X-Men figures that are, aren't, like, over 100 points usually... The executioner trait is like super useful. Being a, it basically, you give them a free action. You remove a character from the team base, remove it from the game. Unless your next attack roll is a crit miss, it the result is eleven and it cannot be rerolled, so it Jesus. can't be propped. And sacrificing Jubilee off that base is not. <laughs> it's funny because, <laughs> like we say, she's the whipping boy, but yeah, she literally of, is for the team base of the X Men. But yeah, she she. I mean, her asset dial gives you plus one defense against ranged attack. It's not even as good as freaking energy shield. Like, I think just her, she would be the one I'd sacrifice. Yeah. And in a certain, that's a trait, so you're going to have it the whole dial. I think there's going to be situations that that's going to come in handy. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. You won't, your opponent has, you know, high defense or something, or a lot of probs. And, well, yeah, and, think about how many times people are running, like, 50 switches. 
Like, it's it's meta for people to run multiple switches, and you're going to be dealing with those probs nonstop. I like it. It's definitely useful. You can't say it's not a good yeah. a good yeah. tool it's, to have on your Swiss Army knife. I mean, it, it's got a good. It's got a really good team ability too for a team base to have, because you pop somebody off for the X Men team ability, and you can heal the base. Yeah, <laughs> healing <laughs> team bases with X Men. See, when they did New Teen Titans, they didn't give it the Teen Titans. Yeah, which was te- weird. Well, it wasn't weird because there. I saw people posting on Realms like. Why didn't they give a Teen Titans team building? I'm like, do you realize how stupid it would be to free heal? And, and now they give it to the X <laughs> team base. The thing is, playing team bases that I've learned, because they typically vary so wildly from click to click, it's nice to be able to say, I really don't like this click. I'm going to take the gamble and heal them up and see what they end up on next. Because there's there's a lot of times, like I, New Mutants especially, which we'll get to, they have a really weird all-over-the-place dial. Um, if I could heal them one randomly, I'd do it in a heartbeat. This is a stupid team ability. And nine range on a team base. Anyways, their trait's good. The cannonball special's awesome. I feel like Gambit and Wolverine are the best to pop off because Gambit has the running shot energy oh, explosion and Wolverine has the blades. Um, either mid-game or l- you low-game. Like yeah, I best at, broken Gambit. I like them best at 300 points. Um, moving on to the X-Men Gold, which looks really sick. Oh, my really God. Cool. There, there was one played uh, Wednesday, wasn't there? Yeah, and uh, that was Bob. He got, like, fourth, so he did pretty good with it. Third it was, fourth. It's a good base, too. Um, it's 500-point dial. Starts off with four clicks of hypersonic. Um, it has a also has the Executioner song trait, which works the same way as the other one. That's the blue base. Um, its psychic trait, oh, though, is really cool. Once per game, when opposing character would be KO'd by the team base. Instead, you turn that character to their last KO click, non-KO click, heal it of 4 damage, and add it to your force. If you do, at the beginning of each of your turns, deal it 1 unavoidable. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's free. Yeah, that's cool. That's sick, man. Well, th- think about it this way. All of a sudden, you just killed Justice League team base, and they have four turns to clean up their support pieces yeah. with their own team base. I mean, that's a really... I mean, and that's a fun power, too. I yeah. mean, taking control of your opponent's pieces. Like, that's the cool part about Mistress Death, is that chance. Yeah. And now you're guaranteed once per game to get it with this. You know, they may not live as long as Mistress Death's thing, but still, it's guaranteed. I love uh, Archangel's ability on the asset dial. Sidestep and plus three speed. That's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Ridiculous. It is, and they, they, hypersonic. S- they start off with Colossus who busts through um, blocking terrain. But yeah, I would be rolling because Bishops gives them steel energy. On a team base, steel energy? Yeah. Are you yeah, kidding so me? St- Every time you're melee hitting, you're getting the heal. Um, the best pop-offs, I feel, is Iceman. Um because of his barrier, his barrier yeah. thing, and also because he doesn't contribute that much to the asset dial. He gives in-cap and plasticity. Not shabby... Not too bad of powers, but when you think about you, plasticity is not as useful to a team base because they already ignore characters anyways. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's holding up the opponent's pieces, but and really, you're going to waste a turn on end cap instead of hitting them for four or five. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to use end cap that often. I like a, I like Iceman though off the base because also that's a barrier to that's help barrier your team. Building. Yeah. And to get a free giving yeah. them tokens. You screw with your opponent. You make them waste. If you're playing as another team base, you make them waste a whole action to get around the barrier to get to you. And that's one less attack they're making on you. On top of that, it's another token on them. You could force them to clear, and that buys you another swing on them. There's just so many opportunities that that affords. He's a really good solo piece. Um, I feel like Storm is a Storm and Colossal aren't bad ones to pop off either. Bosses. Storm because she hits like a boss and she does Psychic Blast and Colossus. So basically, if you need a ranged help, pop off Storm. If you need melee help, pop off Colossus. I didn't take a look at that storm at first, like at first, and then when I saw her dial, I was like, man, I almost wish she was in the main set just so she was easier to get. Because she's a really, she is overall just an awesome. Piece. I have her if you want to borrow her. I'm, I probably I, will. I plan on check on trying her pretty soon because I love my storms. Man, freaking the cheapest storm from M10 anniversary. Don't even remind Gosh, me. Gosh, yeah, that piece has wrecked me so many times. I've used her so many times. She's so sick. I love storm. Um, I feel like their best dial, while this 500 point dial is good, um, I feel like they're most efficient at 300. Yeah, it's the blue. Uh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I was going to say, that looks just like the blue. I feel like they're most because, look, running shot, pulse wave. Oh my gosh. Five damage, and then they pick up invincible for three more clicks. A 300 after point that. character with pulse wave five alone is ridiculous. So I recommend playing them at either 300 or five. I don't like their 200 point dial at all. I really don't either. Um, I like their. Uh, the one thing I do have to say about their 200, though. Is that is a five damage top click on two hundred, which isn't terrible with mind control too. Yeah, I mean, like if you could give them the proper abilities or land them properly on the asset dial, I feel like you could take advantage of it. 
but they're one of those once they're hit bases, they're down at two. The primary reason I don't like the two hundred point dial is it's a little soft. You, after you get past it in Pervy's click, it's yeah. just toughness and only eight clicks of life for two hundred points. Yeah, so I feel I like mean, you could tear through it quick. I whereas honestly, with the three hundred, you're getting a click of imperv, three of invincible, and then imperv again. Like it's, I, I like their five hundred personally because I love the idea of a team base with hypersonic. Because that is a 6 damage hypersonic, and if you have Archangel showing, that's a 14 movement for it. That's ridiculous. So they're just running in, or you could even end your action with that. So you could move all the way up, punch, swing a couple times, hypersonic, and punch one more time as you're leaving. Actually, it's a 16 action. movement because he has sidestep too. Oh yeah, technically yeah. Um, they're honestly, I think gold base is the one that like I would want to use if I had to pick between gold or blue. Although I really like blue, gold's the one I feel like would be really fun to play. I I want like I said I want to try each team base once, um, and this is one of the better ones. And that sculpt's sexy. I mean, like there's no denying that 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 sculpt's just gorgeous. Next, we're going to talk about Excalibur, which is. Actually, when you look at its dial, it doesn't look super sexy, but it looks really fun because the more the more I started looking at this piece and reviewing it and kind of its all its special powers, it looked way better than it did at first glance. At first glance, I didn't like it. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, yeah, it's not as good, but it's pretty dang solid in its own. You know, it has its yeah, own. Yeah, it's, it's got its quirks. Like, it's got its things that make it good. It's got its things that make it tolerable and playable. Um, I don't... I don't love it. I'm going to flat out say that right out the gate. I don't love this team base. It's not something that I want to play all the time. But I would like to break it out once in a while with a fun team, especially with a good support team around it. I feel like you could abuse it really well. Um, it's solo adventure or something that like I you could get some good play out of because there's some fun pieces on the base. The, um, the solo adventure power he's talking about is called Widget. Once per turn, when you make an attack roll, if the result is lower than the click number of a target of the target of the attack, modify that target's combat values by negative one. Team base versus team base, that power is going to be very useful. No, I was just saying solo adventure in general with it because the pieces pop off really well. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, I thought you meant the solo power. But no, if the you solo think power is good. We too. talked about this on one of our very first episodes when this got spoiled. That solo power is really good against other team bases because they're going to be on high clicks. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. going to be on 10, 11, 12. So you're almost always going to get to kick in and minus their one. And that's till your next turn. So they're going to have negative one values when they try to hit you next turn. Um, their movement power is phasing and when another character uses prop control, the dice are re-rolled twice and you get to choose the result from those two rolls. That's that's for that's your ridiculous. props and their props. Yeah, so you're getting two choices on prop every time. That's yeah. really cool. Um, I like the fact they start with Phoenix showing. Like, that alone's awesome. Um, they can't be countered in plus one damage. Yeah, she's by far their best um, dial. All their dials are useful, though. Captain Britain's is really good, I didn't notice at first. When an action token will be given to oh, yeah. Excalibur, yeah. instead, no tokens are given. When it takes damage, after action resolve, roll the d6, turn the dial that many times to the left, so you're... It's just sick. Um, and I'm... One of the other... Hellfire Club does that, too. Yeah, and it's does. so annoying. Yeah, because you think you have against. you think you have the base down. You think it's pinned down and you're ready to just blast it and get done with it. You think it's gonna have to rest a turn. There's no there's no colossal stamina on these things. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like, oh yeah, I don't have to take an action token this turn. So next turn, I'm gonna blast you again. And then and you're, you're just like, this is again. bullshit. And I'm thinking, yeah. to be totally honest, I think that needs to be nerfed a little, like. People don't realize how good that is. It's ridiculous. Well, that goes from... And at, now that I think about it, I'll need to look this up, but I think they did redact some uh, redact some part of this. I don't remember if it was this or if it was the brother, the, um, the Hellfire, but one of them, like, the way it's printed on the card is not how it was meant to be. Like, it's too good. Like, yeah. It got I, I know changed. what you're talking about. We're going to have to look it up. Um, I'll have to look it up, but it was on that list. But I mean, like even like Nightcrawler on their bases, combat reflexes. That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. all uses, and it's useful. all defensive. That's what I love. Shape change, reflexes, super senses. Hell, if there's a click with Megan and Shadowcat, which I'm sure there is on there somewhere, is that alone is ridiculous? Nope, there no, not. there isn't. But you could choose her. I you guess. get work. You get the working together symbol anyway. Personally, I don't like any of their pop offs. I know you said you liked them. I checked them all out. I don't like any of them except for Phoenix. And the bad thing is, if you pop Phoenix off, then you lose their best. You lose their. Um, her uh, asset dial, which is your powers and abilities can't be countered, and they get plus one damage. But I feel like that's worth it because she get she has like psychic blast, running yeah. shot, good range. Like 
I, th- I looked at the rest of the pieces. None of them were really that worth popping off the base to me, but that's just me. And to me, like, popping off the base, it's like, it's always just extra points. That Nightcrawler is very meh. The Megan is very meh. The Kitty like is the very ki- meh. I like the Kitty as, like, tying them up while the team base just pops them, though. Yeah. Yeah, I guess... I don't know, though. But I would like having super that senses. Super Senses. But, but that's if you're on it. Yeah. Yeah. Their uh, perp is really good, too. They use it, but only to target themselves. You roll a d6. If you roll a 1, you have negative 1. But on a 4 to 6, you get plus 2. That's I that's like, worth the risk. I like them odds. Especially on a team base where you're getting, what? If you're playing them at 350, you're getting 4 attacks because yeah. it's fraction of. 4 attacks of plus 2 to what? Does it restrict it to damage or not? No, it's not restricted Anything? at all. Okay, four four attacks of six damage. That's twenty four damage right there. That's ridiculous. Yeah, um, they they remind me a lot of the the two by two Teen Titans um, yeah. Yeah. team base, as in the fact that they don't do a whole lot of damage like some of like Shiar does. They're just really good, well rounded. Yeah, uh, of a team base. I would be fine with more team bases like this. I don't feel like they're going to come out of the gate turn one teleport over to me and do some sort of ridiculous flurry combo or a pulse wave for yeah. like seven damage. Um, I like them best at their full points at 350, but all of their options aren't too shabby. They And actually, they're all pretty much the same. They start off with the same like alteration of powers and stuff. They get TK on their 200 point one, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, and playing them with other Excalibur pieces will be fun. And we just got a lot of Excalibur pieces with the Wolverine set. Yep. Next is the big one, New Mutants. It's been affecting the meta already. And it's the biggest I'm going to say, though... Let's... Okay, I love this base. Um, at 200 <laughs> points, at 200 points, it was a blast to play. Straight out the gate, though, it's easy to look at this, and re- you guys can see it right here. The second, third, and fourth clicks after each one, they're not great, not amazing clicks, I should say, but their their first click on each of the iterations is where they're ridiculous. They pick up shape change combat reflex, which isn't bad. Um, sidestep too, but it's it's not like something I would specifically go out of my way to one off a team base. Right. Um, what makes them good, though, is they have some good pop-off choices. Um, pin side running shot alone is just stupid on a team base. Like, you can abuse that for some stupid good damage. Um, they can pop off Warlock. Warlock has the double perplex on people that share a keyword with them. And enhancement. And enhancement. So you get the plus one damage, you get a 13 attack. It's just ridiculous. Another excellent pop-off I found. I like magic. Besides... I don't like magic. I like Sunspot because he has oh, yeah. running shot, pulse wave. Yeah. Either him or Warlock because, like I said, I, Warlock and him are the two best. If you need support for the base, pop off Warlock. If you need a secondary attacker, pop off Sunspot and be running shot, pulse waving everywhere. I like magic if you're running other new mutants with the team, though. Yeah, because in a big you, game. Yeah. She would be worth it. And if you're up close to somebody, like stuck next to them, I got amazing play out of that magma. I popped her off on a click where she had plasticity against a spiral. Set her right next to the portal, so if he came through, he'd get stuck on her. It was it was fun. Like I really like the magma too. Um, they just have a lot of good options overall. I'd say um, the one thing that people don't think about, and this is what I got him with last week: cannonball on the top click. You're like, oh, it can destroy out. It can destroy blocking as it moves. You can just completely blast through like a lot of maps that people use to counter team bases, and that's one of the things that makes them really good. Um, it's it's a fun piece. Like I like it. Um, I wouldn't call it. If not for the ATA, I'd say it wouldn't be as ridiculous or without the trait. No, it's it's damn near broken, and the reason is because of the trait. Um, actually, both of their traits are really super good. Oh yeah, I forgot. The, 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 the lesser of two evils is the Hellions trait. When they KO an opposing character with an attack, give each other opposing character an action token. Mm. That right there is freaking dumb. Yeah, That's I so forgot stupid. about that. As it is, even it, when I was playing it, I forgot. It about isn't that. even like once per game. Even yeah. <laughs> seriously, the second trait is why it's the best though. When a character that began the game attached to the base would be KO'd, remove a character from this team base and remove it from the game. Turn the damage character to its last non-KO click and heal it of two instead. And actually, now that I think about it, my opponent didn't do that last part whenever he sacrificed somebody. Didn't heal it of two, just left it in the last one? No, he didn't do that at all. He just left him at the top. But that's partly my fault, too, because I didn't read the card. But anyways... Yeah, um, it's, it's ridiculous, especially the fact in that, combo with that. The fact that you ATA. can keep your guys alive for that long is just sick. You should play New Mutants against zombies, there you, you go. should play New Mutants, period. No, New Mutants just screw me. It's just it's really, I mean, it's super cheap, 200 points for all that, or you can go 100 or 150. It's a 212 deep click. I'm just saying that alone's ridiculous. 
And the fact that you can keep popping people off and keep them alive, it's just, it's a really good base. Um, probably, well, we'll talk about the end, which ones we think are the best, but um, it's already affected the meta. It won Dragon Con. Um, X-Men Blue got top four. Yeah. Um, let's move into Shi'ar, which I already kind of talked about, so I'll just go over super quick. Like I said, at 500 points, it hits like a truck. It does whatever the hell it wants to a do. Truck dual wheeling trucks. It has trucks. power cosmic. A truck dual wheeling trucks. <laughs> what is this? Transformers all of a sudden? <laughs> uh, so that's Pacific Rim. Yeah. Or he grabs the. <laughs> grabs oh, everything. Man. God, I just saw that movie for the first time with the dollar movies, and I was blown away. I don't know. <laughs> it's not what I expected. I want to watch it again. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Anyway, she are a few of team base. I'm sorry. Um, it. 500 points does massive damage. 300 points, I feel like it's pretty good for its... That's what I played it at. I feel like it's great for its points just because it has that hypersonic top click and then it gets pulse wave and then psychic blast. Um, 200 points, it's good, but it's... I guess it's still worth its point. I mean, it's a team base. Of course it's worth its points, but... Power Cosmic Team I base just too. I like it best at 300 or 5. I, I like it's 200, though, because uh, it's, once again, as we talked about, or as I said earlier with freaking Pinsai, Pinsai's stupid on a team base period. Um, at 200, I feel like I could run out with a fun Imperial Guard team and enjoy playing it. I mean, it wouldn't be, like, broken, broken. The fact that it starts off with Flurry on the asset dial is just too good. All of its asset dials are things are really good, especially, um, like I said, Gladiator, Flurry, and then War Stars. At the beginning of your turn, gives a guard that the Imperial Guard may use solo adventure as a free action and then may use a team reunite, reunited as a free action. So you can pop somebody off and then pop whoever was already off on all for free. So you can basically switch out your guys. Yeah. Um, or if or you can just pop them off for free. I is mean, there someone who hypersonics that's on the base? I'm not totally I don't think so, but I'm not totally because sure. Because if you could, you could hypersonic in right back next to the base and pick them back on. D- no, you couldn't do that. Um, during oh yeah, because your... you couldn't add somebody onto the base that had been detached. That well, time, actually, you could because that's coming from the asset dial. That's not coming from working together. Oh, it's at the beginning of your turn. Okay, never mind that. So yeah, you couldn't do that. You couldn't reunite them. But um, you could just keep trading people. Every they time. have good pop off. They have great pop offs. Um, Oracle, you and can bury sculpt. Oracle. You can pop off to barrier them into safety. Um, War Star, like I was saying, he's an excellent secondary attacker. Gladiator's an excellent secondary attacker if you're not going to use the flurry from the team base. Um, actually, all their guys are pretty solid, but Gladiator, War Star, and Oracle are the best options, I feel. Uh, let's move into Hellfire, which is really sick as well. This is my favorite one. We talked about it before. Um, it's, it's bottom dial makes me so mad. It has 300, 200, and 100. I like it best at 100. Yep. Um, well, first let's talk about the beefier. So th- it looks totally different at 300 points because it starts with Imperv. Yeah. And it gets some Psychic Blast, and it looks more like an attacking piece. But um, once you get to the 200 and the 100 point levels especially, it goes from doing massive damage to being a massive pain in the ass. It's 8 um, clicks for freaking 100 points. The main reason it's a massive pain in the ass is its asset dial and its special powers, which it has a ton of. Um, it's top one. It's movement is mind control with three targets and no unavoidable damage from it. Are you kidding me? Um, if they hit a character with a team symbol, they can select the team member attached to the target. The next time you use solo venture, that has to be the one you pop off. Yeah. So you can pick like their worst option and then basically working or uh, or someone who's vital to their asset dial. Yeah. Or and then for at that point, you're making their solo adventure like a paint like not even worth using. Their attack ability reduction is dealt. Uh, re- Reduce damage dealt to them by an additional one in addition to other reductions. So if they're on their higher clicks, that's... Uh, if they're on toughness, you're reducing by two. If you're on their higher clicks, you're getting that imper plus three, another yeah. one. It's nuts. Um, it's def- Let's see if it has that at the same time and at any point. Yeah, at top click, it has that. Yeah. Jeez, man. You're reducing oh my by... Th- gosh. You're already reducing by three with a chance to completely ignore... Um, go down to their asset dial real quick, because I think they get mastermind at one point, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, because um, that's their defense power is the one we talked about last week. When they take damage and the power is revealed, they get plus one or increase their values by the amount of damage taken until the end of your next turn. It's the same thing as strong guys. Power. Yeah, 
And at 100 points, as soon as they get hit, they basically get knocked yeah, onto that. Yeah, if you hit them for freaking four all And it now. turns their meh values to holy crap values for 100 points. Yeah, they were honestly the most annoying team base I fought against just because it freaking tore me. For 100 points, I couldn't freaking kill it. Yeah, I I hit this thing for at least 15 damage. I feel like more. I feel like it should have died, but it just kept living. Um those reductions just were just a huge pain in the butt and the fact that it gets to, a chance to heal. And if you notice something about its asset dial, it has two, like, there's 12 clicks on it. Eight of those clicks gives you two different powers at the same time, and all their powers are really good. Oh, yeah. Um, AJ, what, your options are Black King. Adjacent opposing characters can't ignore pushing damage. Black Queen, when the Hellfire Club or any character on a solo adventure... From them KOs an opposing character, heal the Hellfire Club and all characters on a solo adventure from two damage. It's ridiculous. White King with ten clicks at one hundred points and they're healing. Yeah, and, and the fact things. that they they're already ridiculous. White King, if an action now this is the one that I think got changed and I saw why after I had to play against it. If an action token would be given to the Hellfire Club, instead no action tokens are given. When the Hellfire Club takes damage after actions resolve, roll a d6, turn the asset dial that many times to the left. Um, that's the same thing as the uh, Excalibur um, yeah. Captain Britain power, but I think those got changed, but I'm going to look that up. White Queen, that can't be targeted by Mind Control, Psychic Blast, or an opposing character's Perplex. That's pretty pretty good, too. Especially but. when you have a reducer like that with the extra reduced one. And then their number one power is the Mastermind and the Stealth, and they start with that, and you can stay on that if yeah, you want. Yeah, I mean, like, play them with a bunch of those GSX Hellfire Guards or whatever in yeah. Golden Age. So think about this. If you play them on the 300-point dial, you're starting off with with um, Imperv and then reducing by an additional one. Yep. And you're starting off with White King Queen on the asset dial. She's the one that doesn't let you be psychic blasted. So they oh can't even gosh. psychic blast you past and your then they have the mastermind stealth. And yeah, they're sick, man. 300 points and actually to be honest, all their point values are excellent. It would be hard for at. me to pick one. Yeah, it is hard for me to pick one. I don't know which one to pick to be honest cuz I haven't played against it or with it Just as the Just play three. it basically. <laughs> yeah, just play it. Period. The, its pop offs are pretty solid. Um, none of I I would say that Black King is probably the best. Yeah. Because especially late game, because that's when you pop him off, and he's going to start off on his late clicks, yeah, which for him be, are the stupid yeah. clicks. Um, um, White Queen's not bad either because she has psychic blast. That's and the only reason I would say run him at like two hundred instead is because you could pop off Black King. You can't pop him off at the one hundred because he's too expensive. You're going to lose his. Uh, Asset dial, but I think it's worth it because he's oh, yeah. a he's such a beast at that point. I'm waiting for the meta team that somehow gets built around this piece. Like it, this is the kind of piece I think someone could break. It's coming. It's definitely a local game ass kicker already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brotherhood of Mutants. I've played against. It was pretty good, but not super annoying. It um, annoyed the crap out of me. Um, it's. I feel I, like it's best at 150. I, I can agree. Personally, 250. It's not bad either. Um, I don't like its cheap dial that much at all. Yeah. Um, it has four characters, and the trait is when a team member other than Magneto is on a solo adventure and is adjacent to the team base, it can use willpower as well. Now, most of the time, Quicksilver already has willpower, but that Toad and um, Scarlet Witch usually don't. So that's a little bit useful. Um, their attack power is Psychic Blast and Pulse Wave, which they start off with. That's oh, yeah. really good. Once per turn, you can force an opponent to re-roll Imperv, Shape Change, or Super Senses. That's nuts. Yep. Yeah. Um, their damage ability, they can use Perplex, and if they were given a move action this turn, then they can use Perplex a second time. When are they not going to get that? You know, most of the time they're going to get that. Um, they're All of their... I'd like them all except Toad. I can see Toads being useful, but I don't like it that much. I feel like he's a good pop-off just to go tie up somebody. My particular annoyance with them, though, came down to a mixture between hypersonic energy shield, where they would punch and then run away around a corner, yeah. and in order for me to get to them, I'd have to shoot them, and I couldn't really hit them with a 19. Or, it, when he got stuck on combat reflexes with Quicksilver, he stayed there. So then it's always a 19 from range or melee. And it's... Plus the... Oh, well. I wouldn't play this as, like, my main attacker for my team, this is an annoying as crap piece that I don't want to deal with, but is making me deal with it. I really want to play it. This will probably be the next one I play. 
I want to play it with other Brotherhood pieces yeah. and play a big Brotherhood team. Yeah. And just have them kind of, like you said, be, in a, pain, be a pain in the butt. It's it's not even, like, it's borderline not even a fun just to fight because it's just annoying. It's hypersonic, you get punching you, running away back and forth. When I played against it last week, I, I did, it wasn't as annoying for me as it was for you because I was able to gas pellet it and get it off that hypersonic. Yeah, we were playing on Realm of Death, though. And then after that, it was. We just as, run around corners and hide. It wasn't was a bad, about. yeah. I was playing on a more open map as well. Was that your pick? That was my pick. Way to go, um, Austin. Magneto is what they start off with, and he gives them invul. Definitely nothing to scoff yeah. at, along with that, that energy That's shield. That's what so. killed me when I played Clown Prince. I feel like they're just a solid all-around team. They're not super good, but they're not bad either. Yeah, they're just good. Um, I like them best at 150 and 250. I like Toad as the best pop-off for tie-up, because we already talked about how nuts he is at tying up. And he, he doesn't contribute the the best to the asset dial. So I would pop him off and go tie somebody up while they're running around and, and busting shots. Um, like I said, overall not the best, but it's not bad. And, and I like to see more team bases be kind of on this power level, as opposed to the Imperial Guard level and the... Uh, you know, Justice League level. The Imperial and, Guard was definitely built to be the Justice League base. New in this set. Um, so, looking at all these, what do you think is the best overall? Like, think about each of them's most efficient point dial. Which one do you feel like is the best team base overall? <laughs> New Mutants of 200 is a given. Like, I mean, I think the Imperial Guard is absolutely ridiculous at, any, at almost any point value, but New Mutants at 200, you're getting the absolute best 200 point piece you could possibly get you're talking about 12 clicks for 200 points you can pop people off the base and then kill people on the base instead of having them get killed and you have good pop-offs too yeah really and good. if you kill if you kill an enemy everyone gets an action token it's a stupid base at 200 it's got access to one of the best <clears throat> atas in the game probably it's just ridiculous well it's it's not in its in of itself one of the best atas but coupled with, their, coupled trait, with their trait yeah. it's yeah. nuts um, yeah, I agree. I really wanted... I, at first, I was going to say a tie between New Mutants and Shi'ar, but honestly, New Mutants at 200 is probably the best. Shi'ar, a very close second. Yeah. And Hellfire... Uh, Hellfire is a Hellfire there, really close, too, to be honest. Um, uh, they're all good, though. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I'm pretty happy with all of them. They all look great. What do you think is the best... What's your personal <laughs> favorite looking-wise? Uh... Honestly, I'm gonna have to go with gold. I think gold did the best job of uh, the different effects on all the people. Yeah, blue's got the cool like danger room effect going on that looks cool. Shear, I I like Shear the best. Gold gold is second, and um, I like New Mutants a lot too. Yeah, I'm I not, think it just I like their. It's more even the characters. Yeah, like their colors just kind of complement. Especially uh, Sunspot. Especially yeah. the cactus. Or, uh, cannonball on the back. Cannonball, yeah. yeah. Cannonball. I don't like the Excalibur one actually. I don't either. I do love Phoenix. And actually, I love the Excalibur. Their ability, like the characters, look cool. It's just my Nightcrawler issue, makes honestly, the Excalibur team base. My biggest issue with the model of it is just that the lighthouse is so flat. I think had they accented the lighthouse yeah. in the middle of it or something a little See, more. See, but in the picture, the lighthouse looks great. Yeah. Gold gold looks sick, and uh, Shi'ar definitely looks sick. I like the um, Hellfire Club a lot, too. Brotherhoods isn't bad, either. Um, it's it's simple for what it is, but I think the figures really make it pop a little bit. And the Hellfire I like a lot, too, because it's straightforward, but it's what you'd expect. Paul Paul's is looking sick. His gold base, where he's oh, yeah. painting all the guys in black and gold. Man, it looks awesome so far. Is doing a really good job on that. Um, so that's that's a good wrap-up. I feel like we've given you some basic information if you're going to play these guys as to kind of what dial you should play them at, who's your best pop-offs, if, and, and you can look through these and, uh, and figure out your best options. The one thing I'll say is the majority of them, let's see, one, two, three, four, five of them, you have to have a super rare to complete. All of them except for Brotherhood. Or, sorry, no, not on Brotherhood or on um, X-Men Blue. Or Black, or Gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four of the six, you need a Super Rare to complete. Or seven, there is seven. Five, yeah. five of the seven, you need a Super Rare to complete, which sucks. It does. I mean, I, I still need a Phoenix and a War Star and a, and a Black, a White King, like, or Black King... It's just... Black King's a rare. It sucked in Teen Titans. You got Black Queen, she's super rare. 
Oh, that's right. I finally picked up uh, Black Queen. Yeah. Um, it, it was a pain in the butt to get Flash in Teen Titans for some people, and he was the only one. In this set, you have a lot of team bases that need super airs, and that kind of sucks. Well, Starfire was an SR, wasn't she? Yeah, that's true, Starfire. So you had two out of I the, had Starfire. The I don't personally have a big issue with SRs being requirements for team bases. Like, I, I, if it was the same as Teen Titans, where only a couple of them, but this one is five out of seven need them. I'd kind of that's rather, pretty bad. I'd kind of rather have it where each base needs the same amount of one common, one uncommon, one rare, one SR, or something like that. Um, some of them are like three commons and an SR or whatever. Yeah, I like um, Brotherhood in, in the fact that you just need one rare and one common. That's that's nice for me. I like the fact you can put the white Magneto in there. Um, <laughs> you can't put in my own regular Magneto on there. <laughs> Overall, I'm happy with them. They look awesome. They play, they play awesome. awesome. And I thing- just wish, you know... Just doing a very slight nerf to working together. I shouldn't say very slight, but a nerf to to working together will make team bases slightly more fun. Like I would, I, they're not the best mechanic. I agree. In in as far as strategy, I do think they're fun to play if you play them correctly and not super like meta ish. Like I if would, you play them and you're constantly popping people off and and you're playing them with other pieces, like I did with the yeah. Shiar. Like it, playing them like that was a blast. Playing them just as a one-man like beat stick is not fun. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say is I really I love playing team bases at two hundred. Every time I've played one with that magic number two hundred with a team built around it and all this fun stuff, I've loved playing them, and I like playing team base versus team base like that. I have not enjoyed a single game with a three hundred or four hundred point team base to date. Like every time I've either gotten stomped or I've completely obliterated my opponent with one, and it's not enjoyable. Like, I love Villains for Hire at 200 with a support team. It's actually fun. I love New Mutants at 200 with a support team. That was fun. Um, when I tried out Excalibur in a test game, I love them at their lower point values. They're they're fun bases if you play them on their lower ends. The only one that had the only well, I should say two that have ridiculous low ends would be Hellfire and New Mutants. And I, I, I think like overall, they're they're fun. I like the mechanic, as I said, against other team bases. But I also, as you said, I don't like beat stick one man army team bases. Yeah. They're just not enjoyable like that. I want them to have cool traits. I want them to be able to support support and be a member of my team build. They shouldn't be my literal team build. Um, let's move into just a tip. Today's is kind of a very small and specific one, but I feel like <laughs> Sorry. But I feel like it's one that everybody forgets and is honestly forgotten even exists. This this sentence exists on the PAC. Don't forget that Leap Climb lets you attack regardless of your elevation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people just think it you know, lets you ignore everything and, and plus two on breakaway. But there's been a couple games. The reason this popped up in my head is because I did it last week. Um, my opponent had somebody who had no range. And I had a Batman with Leap Climb. I Leap Climbed over to the edge, not on stairs, just over on the edge next to him. And he can't shoot me because he doesn't have range. And then next turn, I punch him. He's like, you can't punch me. I'm like, I can punch you. I have Leap Climb. And he's like, son of a bitch. I forgot. (laughs) Like, nobody, everybody forgets about it. Like, I'm sure it used to be used a lot. But these days, you don't see Leap Climb that much. I still wish Flyers could do it. Improved movement has kind of taken away some of the need for Leap Climb. But that's one of the features of Leap Climb that's different from Improved Movement. Right. Yeah. That's the reason that it's slightly... I mean, it's not useful all the time. But when it is useful, it's fun to use. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Just don't forget about that. Because I feel like... Everybody can sit back and think of a time where they probably could have attacked and not even realized that they could have, you know, you know, that they had leap climb at the time and that they could have done that. Um, let's move to community. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, Drew is going to talk about the dials we had submitted for round three. Now, Drew, what was your round three um, assignment? Uh, put a symbiote on something from the Marvel Universe. <laughs> and we got the fact it was so broad left it open to some awesome reset. stuff. We had so many different crazy submissions. Um, there was what Austin a cr- there was a Krakoa. Cr- I personally did a. I threw one in there for fun. No, yours doesn't count. I know it doesn't count. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yours. You, you could slap it on about anything. Like you could put a symbiote on about anything. There was a Galactus in there somewhere. There's all kinds of crap. There was, you know what I was, you know what I was wanting that 
nobody ended up putting in there was Mania, the new um, girl yeah. that's possessed by Symbiote, but nobody did that. Um, the Silver Surfer possessed by Carnage. Like, we saw all kinds of crazy combos, which is what you wanted. Right? I mean, that's what you wanted out of these guys was to see some crazy. Yeah. That's Krakoa true. was freaking awesome. Like That took us all by surprise. Um, Galact. Yeah, like I said, Galactus. So, Drew, what were the best scores that you gave out? Did you give any 10s? I gave 110. And who got the 10? Captain Swagnito. And was he the Krakoa? He was Krakoa, right? He was the Krakoa, right? yeah. yeah. I liked it a lot myself. I thought it was... I I couldn't... There was dial design, and then there was creativity. And I wanted to judge this mostly on creativity. So, and his was the most creative, in my opinion. This dial looks so crazy. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It has, like, every color in the it's game like on it. like some Skittles all over yeah. it. <laughs> but I love it. I do, oh, too. I do, too. I like the... Um, trait <laughs> the squares <laughs> within three squares are adjacent to him. It's an island with a symbiote. Come on. <laughs> what, this better be Marvel's next event. Uh, just what? Just crack, Just Krakoa with a symbiote. Just like, with the X-Men have to put it down. Uh, it'll, it'll be bad. <laughs> um, it's just... He has traded sidestep, plasticity, and multi-attack. <laughs> so stupid. He costs 400 points or 300 points. Has two options. Uh he has monster keyword. You run his ass with some oh, man. Oh shit! I didn't even think about that. Here, <laughs> God, swag needle. What the hell, man? Um, he has stealth on top click. He's got edge wind. Keyword. It's called monster beneath your feet, and he has stealth. Um, at the beginning of your first turn, or at the beginning of your turn, if this power was revealed since your last turn as a result of an attack, you may give Krakarnage a free action to use phasing teleport. After this action is resolved, you may place. Debris markers in any squares adjacent to or, or occupied by Carnage, and deal two damage to any opposing characters occupying a debris marker. So it's so kind of like, like automatic quake. Yeah. You didn't realize that he was there, and he's you know Which causing is a little quake. Honestly. That's really cool. Uh, Razor terrain's pretty cool. You use quake may use normally or when calculating damage roll a d6 and replace the damage with the result minimum three. Minimum is, three. Is <laughs> why wouldn't nuts. you replace it? And think about this. Oh, if you do, if he oh, has that, the damage. no, he has he has the blades with a minimum of three with the quake, and that quake is hitting three all within oh three squares. Gosh. But then the other part of it is, if you did use quake that way, he deals takes one unavoidable. But oh no! Still, are you kidding me? Like, think how much damage that's going to dish out to everybody after uh, you phasing think teleported if, underneath. Even, the even if you just roll a five, like. Five quake and hit everybody within three squares. For five? No. What happens is you get hit. You end up on the teleport click. You teleport up underneath, smack them all for two, and, he's, and then you quake. And he's got a stop click. Is if he needs it. His damage ability is a stop click, and he can use outwit, perplex, and shape change <laughs> when rolling for per, for shape change. If he rolls a six, he deals the attacking character. Oh with my opinion. gosh! It's. It's very it's borderline, just, almost going to get docked points for being too good. It's one of those pieces that... It like, is expensive to play, and um, it can be outwitted, so, I mean, that it has that against but it. But I want to see something like this made, just because it'd be fun to play against for, like, a fun event. It would definitely be fun to play with and against, that's for sure. Yeah. It's like a super group, basically, is what it is. Speaking of super group, there was a group with a symbiote in there. Too. Oh, was there? I didn't even see that. Yeah, yeah it's it's... Um, shout outs to Chris MC, MC McNick, however you say your name, for um, doing the Claw Niche, which is the current book, uh, character yeah, in Carnage. Was, That's really cool, too. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's see. You gave. I'm going to look at your scores here. I gave a lot of nines. I'm going to look at your scores. I'm going to add them up with our current uh, the values from week one and week two. And let's see who would have the highest overall. That would be... I think it's going to be a tie. I, no, I think it's going to be battering because he had he had a 20 already. He was in the lead, and you gave him a 9 out of 10. That puts him at a 29. Swagnito is going to be a 10, a 10, and an 8, I think. Did you give him an 8? Oh, yeah, sure. he's got to be a 28. Oh. So Swagnito missed it by one. Battering one, uh, month two. Um, we had there's going to be a lot of people that are around 27 mark like 26 yeah. 27 so overall these submissions were really fun 
Um, it's it's really fun talking to you guys on the board, on the you know thread too, and I, I like the laughs of it all, like seeing people's around. choices and running with the decisions. Talking about comics years. and everything, and, and we really enjoy you know talking with you guys We're and doing these. The community. They're gonna keep on coming, so you know it's let's get the, let's get some more people in the di- design contest. Let's see some some more craziness and and uh, just kind of enjoy comics and enjoy this game together. I mean, I'm having a blast with this. It's right? great, man. Um, so I will contact Battering. Actually, isn't that who won best build? Didn't he build the team that? Yeah, he won. Yeah. So. He built the team that you won um, yeah. your thing with. So I'll contact you again and see what else poker chips I'm going to be shipping you. And uh, we will start the next dial design up in a couple weeks. There's going to be like a week hiatus um, on the 28th, which is the last Saturday of December or September. Whenever we do that podcast, it's I'll, December already. September. <laughs> Whenever we do that podcast, I'll go ahead and give out the um, the assignment in for October. We're gonna have to step up our game and making some fun requirements. Yeah. People have been talking about wanting to do a team base. Um, we will do a team base for sure coming up. Um, maybe not next month, but we will be doing one for sure, and we'll we'll work out the the schematics on how to do that. Um, I also want to real quick remind you guys to enter the best build contest, which is also free. All our contests are completely free. Because um, we legally can't charge for them. Yeah, I get. We could give it true. I guess we could. Give me five could. bucks. Given a product you make. Um, the way that best build works, if you're unfamiliar with it, is I give you a build rule stipulation, and you build us a team for that. Um, for those build rules, you submit it either through email at um, dial h for hero clicks at gmail dot com, or on hc realms on our thread, or on Reddit on our thread, and um, or on Twitter. It doesn't matter. Submit it to us. There, we have tons of ways for you to contact us. Um, you submit your teams. We take all of the teams that you guys have submitted. We look at them, and we each pick one that we want to play the most out of all of them. And then we play them. We do that actual build at our venue with you know a dozen other people. And uh, we play the, your teams for that week. And whichever one of us places the best, um, whoever built the team and submitted that team to us wins the contest. Now, last month we had perfect tie between Drew and Austin. It was like two and one. Literally, it was like... Two and one, seven ninety nine. I yeah, think. Yeah, it was something like, like something that. crazy. They, they had an exactly like two and one, seven ninety nine points. And Drew won the roll-off with so a So they had to do a roll-off. Um, crit to 10 was the roll-off. Too. The, that was crazy. The build rules for months for best build September is called Savage 6. It's 600 points, modern age, relics, resources, and ATAs are allowed. Team bases and colossals are not allowed, and you must use exactly six figures on your team. Now, resources and relics don't count towards that total of six figures. That's six character figures. Um, And those are due by September 19th, which is Thursday. Um, And then we're going to be playing them on the 21st, and we'll be talking about them next week on our podcast, and we'll announce how how our games went. And how we did. We've already got some really cool submissions. Yeah. I would suggest don't build us an X Force team using like all the new Wolverine and the X Men characters because I've already gotten like four copies of the exact same team. I was now. gonna say honestly, <laughs> when I get my choice, I'm gonna go with the most creative, crazy team of fun pieces. Um, I don't know how you guys are gonna be picking. I have team, one but... I'm eyeballing already, but I don't want to tell you guys because I don't want you to pick it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hate pick it now. But we've had a lot of. There's uh, been some fun ones already. A lot of cool submissions. We've had a future theme team. Um, like I said, a bunch of X Force teams. Like this team of of Ellie Nightcrawler, uh, Spiral, Phantom X, uh, Tab App Wolverine, and Shatterstar and Richter. I think like that oh, team God. has been submitted literally at least three times That's now ridiculous. to us, if not four. So don't build that team again, guys, because your chances. <laughs> It are even more slim because we have like three other copies of it. Yeah, go, go fun with it, guys. I mean, like, I want to see a fun Legion of Monsters one. I think that'd be kind of cool. There's a Thunderbolts team already. Um, a really stupidly good uh, Heroes for Hire team already. Really? Yeah. That doesn't baffle me at all. Um, so, anyways, get get those into us by Thursday, and um, get your your chance into winning some more my custom poker chips. All right. Um, anything else for community? Oh, we had a uh, couple questions this week. Um, Sam B, which reminds me of Dead Island, Sam B. 
<laughs> um, oh god. Sam B wants to know who are our top three favorite comic artists. And I, oh my god. I oh, as man, a question this? that I love, I'll let you guys go first. There's the guy who did the Invincible Iron Man run, J C Amarado, I think, or something like that. Weird. I'll look it up while you think of some more. Um he's done uh he did the work um he's done some work on the new Iron Man run and he's done some on uh, the Invincible Iron Man and a few other comics. I really like his work. Um, I like the uh, whoever's doing the current artwork on. Um, oh, are you talking about Salvador? Or not Salvador? No. Uh, do 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 do. Because Salvador Larocca did all. all I do of like Larocca stuff a lot. Um, he's done a lot of the covers, especially for Invincible Iron Man, and his cover art's gorgeous. Um, no, it's someone else who did the line work. But uh, his his work's great. Um. The guy who's doing East of West right now. Like, it's very clean, but he's done a good job with uh, doing it really stylized, too. Um, yeah, that book overall just has a lot of style. It does look really cool. Yeah, it did. and, um, of course, the Saga artist, I'm sure you're going to say. Uh, yeah, she, <laughs> that's Fiona Staples. Mine, uh, my all-time favorite artist is J.H. Williams III, um, who does Batwoman. And if you guys want to see my favorite art, freaking Batwoman Elegy hardcover. He used to do Batwoman. The best freaking art ever, and he's he is currently writing and doing the art for Batwoman and uh, New Fifty Two, and it, he's keeping it up. But Elegy was like his top, his top work. He's done a lot of other stuff too, uh, particularly DC stuff. Um, Perez is gonna always be in my top three. Um, I mean, New Teen Titans was like my book that and ultimate spider-man when ultimate spider-man first came out were like the two comics my two favorite comics when i was a kid and um i i just i loved perez's art perez has done a lot of important books too like infinite crisis and christ on infinite earth like a bunch of important dc books he's done uh, a lot of he's in some batman too um just kind of like clean like nothing Nothing over the top. It's just like I don't know. I just love the. It's just perfect to me. It looks realistic, but yeah, looks I like special too. In in some way, I was gonna say I like um, in the middle of uh, in the middle of Venom. Whoever did the artwork on yeah, that? Yeah, uh, who was it? Um, it was more like it was overlined artwork, kind yeah. of, where you can kind of see some of the drawn and stuff. But I kind of like that. Um, I, I I don't like it too clean cut sometimes. I kind of like it looking very pencil-y, very... Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the Circle of Four, that entire arc had great artwork across the board, I thought. Um, they did a great job with all the environments and everything. Um, but I can't think of who it was that did that. I don't remember. Um, the East of West artist was um, Nick Dragata. Yeah, his work's really um, clean, but it's very, very stylized. I like it. J.H. Williams' third is my number one. Perez is my second. And then Neil Adams is my third. Um, that's He's a, a favorite of a lot of people, just especially Batman. He's like the best Batman artist ever. And he's a, he's also, like Perez, has done a lot of important books, especially in DC. Um, and then, like Austin said, I, I'm really loving Fiona Staples on uh, Saga. Saga right now, man. She is killing that book. I've if I'd like to see if she keeps like, because she's fairly new, she's definitely like the best woman artist, and she's getting a lot of rep right now in the com- for her art on Saga, and hopefully she stays around for a long time and gets on some other really interesting books, and because I love her art. Wait, who do you like, Drew? Well, I got a gigantic raging boner for uh, Rob Liefeld. Now, Rob Liefeld is I'm very lying. popular. I'm totally lying. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy who does Animal Man? Jeff Lemire. Is that who it is? Yeah, Jeff. Or, well, let me double check. I think it's Lemire. Um, I know that he's he's writing um, like Green Arrow right now. And uh, I think. The latest run, of, the new Fifty Two run of Animal Man, has some of the best art I've ever seen. Yeah, it does, and it's really like creepy in a good way. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, keeping on the creepy vibe, who does Lock and Key? Because he oh, is man. really good. That has some awesome art. Because he is really good. And it's the same guy throughout. I can't remember his name. Well, first let's check out Animal Man here and see who's the new 52 artist. Uh, it may uh, be... Lem- is Travel Foreman? Uh, Travel Foreman. Right. Um, Jeff Lemire does art too in Sweet Tooth in his new yeah. book Trillium, which I uh, want to talk about later. He has... it. 
it's so weird, but it it's cool. It, it's his own like flavor. You know what I mean? It's hard for me to say because I love him sometimes, but other times I don't. It almost looks kiddish in. It looks like it was drawn by a kid. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, it almost looks like it's something a kid drew, but it's not. Like, it's good at the same time. It's really weird. I wouldn't like him on some books, but in the right place, his art is perfect. In his books, it's fine because his books are usually weird and out there already. Like, it kind of And it adds to the atmosphere of it. It makes it, yeah. Um, Who, lock and key, do, do, do. Can't remember. I'm not totally sure, but we'll find it. Um. If you haven't read Lock and Key, read Lock and yeah, Key. Yeah, I read the first trade. and Oh, uh, it's Gabrielle Rodriguez, I think? And I maybe? freaking... Yeah, it is. Gabrielle yeah. Rodriguez. Um, I fell in love with that first trade, man. It's just like... It's so It's good. so interesting, it's man. It's good. And is this the next book you guys are going to beat me over the No, with? No, just it's, just, it's just a solid, really good book. <laughs> Other and people get to talk. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, you never put your finger on um, it. What, what, what are you is, guys talking what about is, over there? What? Putting fingers where? Um, anyway. Well, let's keep this... Who's the guy on the current run of Hawkeye? Let's keep this rated G. Oh, well. oh that is a good question, because that is some cool uh, art, Because too. he's got really good art. Some of the best I've seen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can't remember. Huh. <laughs> well, that really didn't help at yeah, all. Yeah, it's not coming up. Um, yeah, in that book... It's writing and it's art is both, it's amazing. both are it's like really style is just awesome. different. Yeah, it just has its own cool style and vibe. It's yeah. Um, Fraction is kicking that book. I mean, at least he's doing good on that book. Oh, Aja, yeah, and Aja does some other books too. Uh, okay. um, but it, yeah. Fraction's kicking ass with that book, man. Ha- that Hawkeye runs so yeah. good. Anyways, um, so I hope that answers your questions. Gives you an idea of some of our favorite arts. Um, we also had a, a email from Kevin I wanted to read. Um, that was very encouraging. Kevin for battle. Does he ask what um, our favorite thing from Taco Bell is? Hey, hey guys, I just finished episode 8 on team building, which was enjoyable and informative. I've only been playing, playing clicks for about two months, and my con- community is all still in the new to the, in the new to the game stage. Your show has helped my whole Clicks community learn the game, and we all wish you guys luck. Keep up the good work. First of all, thank you very much. Wow. This Thanks. is the kind of feedback we like to hear. Um, I know that we kind of run... I mean, our podcast is, like we said when we first started, and what people were responding to us with is it feels like just guys kicking back, cracking a beer and some pizza, and just talk, you know, yeah. shooting the shit. Yeah. That's what we want. That's the atmosphere we want to present, but we also want to try to, you know, slow, you know, add a tip here or there, not feel like we're talking down and teaching yeah. to people. Yeah. But we, you know, we're <laughs> what all... What do you mean by you people? We're all about... Um, <laughs> it's growing the community Yeah, in growing the community, period. Like, that's the main overall objective. And growing the game, just getting more people in the game, and I'm so happy that Clicks has, like, started yeah, exploding. Crazy. Yeah. It's so much more popular now than, even than just last year. I mean, it's really picked up steam. And um, I'm so happy to see all the new players we have, especially at our venue. I mean, our venue's lately... Six, five, six, seven people, new guys in yeah, the last man, few weeks. Yeah, man, it's crazy. And I was going to say what I like, especially when we have like Phil on here talking about judging and stuff, I like it because when we started out and you guys were judging, you guys really didn't have anyone that gave advice on how to judge right. And I've seen a lot of venues that really still don't, like long-running venues that still make a lot of, they cause a lot of problems because they don't keep up with stuff. And it's nice to be able to have an outlet to tell people of things we've screwed up even and stuff that we've done wrong um and it, it's nice to hear back from people especially to say that we've helped in some way um he says p.s what do you think the odds are of a hellboy or bprd set in the near future it's a shame that there are no modern figures for my favorite character in comics well del toro is doing another movie so we'll see well we we talked about before because we we said if we could make one figure what would we make and i said i i used to always say hellboy and then Phantom X was always kind of in there too, but now I don't have to worry about Phantom X. So now so it's, Hellboy. <laughs> it's definitely Hellboy. And we talked about this like three episodes ago, and I said the same thing. Like, I love Hellboy. I love Mike Magnolia. I mean, that just the character in general. They couldn't have picked a better person to play with the movie than Ron Perlman. Yeah, Ron Perlman, pretty good. He is like the epitome of Hellboy. If you read the books and you sit and think, I mean, 
if if they had any input in that at all, that he had to be the director's first choice. Like he is literally the human version of Hellboy. Yep. And God, I love him so much in those movies. Um, I love Hellboy. We talked about there's problems when you go with anybody besides DC and Marvel, even though the licensing and royalties are just too expensive. Yeah, the problem is going to be hooking up with Dark Horse with the movie coming out though. Like Austin said. That does increase the odds a little bit. From yeah. what I understand... Especially with all the movie sets that WizKids has been doing a lot lately. See, the problem with Dark Horse is Dark Horse typically themselves licenses from other people. And they make their own toys and stuff like that, too. Yeah, they do have a lot of so, toys. So, WizKids being one of their direct competitors, they would have to give them exclusive rights just to the Hellboy stuff. And not for toys. It had to be just for hero clips. I would say if they were smart, though, they, they should do it. I mean, they're definitely going to make money on it. And um, the um, there's a starter set for it, kind of like a starter set. Oh my it's gosh, more like, like my it's favorite box. Ever it's it's more like its own special little collector's edition set. The Hellboy and the BPRD pack I picked up at Gen Con actually. Um, it's very old. It's from Clicks when Clicks first started. So the figures don't hold up super well. But I wouldn't say that they're not playable because there's like two that are not playable. But the other ones. You could play them with a couple other good pieces and still win, you know, go like two and one or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like they're they're not going to be easy to play pieces, but they still hold up. And, um, and I mean, how fun it would it be to use Hellboy? What I ended up doing, if you want, um, I had an old Hellboy. Let me see if I can find the number for him because he's really cheap to buy also. And you can do what I did and just, uh, sculpt, swap just sculpt swap his ass. Um, and I got that... Uh, I was recommended the dial to switch them on by a, another Clicks player. I took Hellboy 69, um, which in and of itself isn't a horrible piece still. First of all, BPR, the um, team ability is wild card, so wild card's always useful. Uh, it's 100, he's 104 points, top dial, he has um, charge super strength and CCE. But anyways, the sculpt is pretty nice. Like, it still holds up really well. Yeah, it's good. And you can pick this piece up for like two bucks. Um, if you really want to go all out and pay more, you can get the demon, the full demon version of Hellboy. He's um, IN087. He is going to run you about seven or eight bucks, though. But um, I just recommend getting one of the REV of the ND version, of uh, the 067 or 68 or 69 of Hellboy, and then cracking him off of his base without breaking him, of course, and then putting him on the dial for the Chaos War Fast Forces Thor. Because that's the most accurate to Hellboy dial you're going to get. Um, he's 125 points. He has running shot and, and um, imperv on his top click with one bolt. So it's just, I mean, it's representing the pistol um, with the Hellboy has. And uh, he has charge a lot. He has flurry some. He has quake. The only thing that he, he, the only thing that he doesn't have that I feel like Hellboy should have is either regen or steel energy towards the end of his dial um but yeah and i just ended up like i i put him on this dial um actually my girlfriend like made a custom hero clicks hellboy card for me and i gave him like new names to his powers that yeah. are like hellboy book you know stuff that happens in hellboy books and uh, i played him and it's it's a good dial it's not super broken or anything and it's still I mean, legal for most local tournaments because it's you're not changing the dial at all. You're not altering yeah. the dial. In fact, you're making it worse because you're not using that special movement power that works with the Avengers. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, all you're doing is just pretending that it's Hellboy instead of pretending it's Thor. <laughs> so I mean, if you guys have characters that you want to do, you know, you want to get remakes for, that's one option you have. Um, it's not that hard either to crack a, a sculpt off of one and then hot glue gun it on another piece. So. Try that if you if you're that desperate, which <laughs> I which I was. But yeah, do it. <laughs> and as I said earlier, like the fact that Del Toro has the funding to do a third movie, and he just had Pacific Rim. They uh, whoever was publishing Legendary, they just ran Pacific Rim clicks and licensed them out to NECA. I mean, there's always the possibility. That Look at this picks, guy coming up with the. <laughs> I'm just saying the good ideas. Yeah. I, I'm, I got your back. Um, if they do a third Hellboy movie, I think they'll do clicks. I think it's almost I'm digging it. I'm it's digging a pretty it. high chance. I would be... And I would buy it. Crazy <laughs> excited. Dude, man. I want freaking... Uh, what's his name? The 
aquatic dude. Abe? Abe, yeah. You don't even know what Abe is. I almost said Sam. I'm so ashamed that I can't get you guys to read the book. You guys, read his name. I have every Hellboy trade in there. I'll kill I'll, you guys. I'll, I'll read eventually, your Hellboy trade. I will you kill better you guys read. eventually. Is that what you just said? Well, that's a given, too. <laughs> um, so thank you, Kevin, for the email, and, and we love hearing more support from you guys. Let's move into comics section. First, let's talk about the DC Villain books. And then there's two books that I started reading this week, which I have loved and I want to recommend and talk about too. Villain books or books in general? The So DC kicked off its Villains Month, if, it, if nobody knows. And basically every, I think it's every book, every New 52 yeah, book. Almost every book. Okay, like 99% yeah. of the New 52 books, instead of running their current story arcs, they're doing point one and point two, point three issues. That are basically one shots of villains, and some of them are New Fifty Two origin stories, and some of them are just cool little short stories yeah. for those characters. Which ones have you guys read um, so far, and which ones have you liked? Um, I've read the Joker one. The Joker one was actually I liked it. I it, liked it a lot too. It wasn't like it was inter- It was really interesting. Like I, I kept wanting to finish it. Um, it. I don't want to spoil anything for it, but it's a, it's a good one. I'd recommend it. The art's good. In oh, the art's too, definitely yeah. really good in it. Um, and it kind of matches the story, too. Like, it's kind of playful and crazy. It's got the Joker tone where yeah. it's creepy. It's colorful, but crazy, like yeah. creepy at the same time. It's creepy, but it's fun. Yeah, I recommend the Joker one, too. Um, I, read, uh, I read the Earth 2 one with uh, Desaad, I think it is. I wouldn't actually recommend that one. Earth 2 itself's um, kind of like an interest to me, but it's not like a must-read. But the Desaad book itself was just kind of boring. Like it was, it was paced bad. It wasn't really like anything drastically interesting. Um, I read the Dark Side one. The Dark Side one was really good. I liked it. Um, it did a bunch of backtracking and rewriting of some origin stuff that was interesting. I read it too. Uh, it was cool to see the new Fifty Two origin story, but I didn't like the book as there a whole. There was a revelation. In it, though. I didn't like. Yeah, I didn't like it that much though. It was okay. It, I, I basically I I hadn't super recommended. I had my hopes higher for it, is what I yeah, said. Yeah, true. I didn't know anything about Dark Side though before that. I should say. Oh yeah, so. I guess so. It probably was more interesting to me. Um, what else did I read? Um, Green Lantern's Relic one actually. Okay, Relic has been that villain that hasn't really like hooked oh, me. He's brand. Yeah, I don't like him that much either. Yeah. But I, I actually really liked the Green Lantern one because it kind of explained what he was and why he was there, and it was interesting. Um, oh, did you read Deadshot? Oh, I did like Deadshots a lot. Yeah. I did too. Yeah, his is one of my favorites, and I recommend it. Um, did you read Killer Frost? Killer Frost, I really liked actually. It was pretty cool. I, and I yeah. like her. I like. <laughs> <laughs> as funny as every time I say a pun, I don't even think about the fact that I'm saying pun. Uh, I did. I liked her origin story a lot. Yeah, and it made me actually interested in the character, which is what I was hoping some of these books would do. Would be to grab me for characters that I hadn't actually read about before like I don't know I don't know squat about Killer Frost like all of a sudden now after reading her origin like I like her as a character I want to know more I want to see more oh uh, one I definitely want to talk about is Lobo did you read Lobo yeah okay what the (laughs) what are they doing I don't know I feel like honestly they're trying to cash in on the name I feel like had they taken and given him a different name, I'd be fine with him. Um, had they taken a different name and stuff, I would have been fine with him. But the fact that they named him Lobo, I feel like it's a gimmick, and well, they're the, not. Is it real? I mean, the question is: Yeah, are I, they gonna make it Lobo? And I don't. I think it's a gimmick, and they're trying to just. So, if people don't know, what we're talking about. We kind of we kind of did talk about this on a future on a yeah. past episode, I think. Basically, this new Lobo DC Villains book is introduces you to this version of Lobo who looks like I don't even know how to describe him. He oh, looks, is that that one? Uh, he's like a skinny version. Yeah, it's that one art. I kind of like. I like the he, character. I don't like him as Lobo. I like the character. I hate his look. He looks like uh, some kind of like mixed hipster, between like a greaser. He looks and like that. hipster Lobo or something. I don't know. I don't like the way he looks. His attitude is fine, but he's just. I want Lobo. I want my. <laughs> I want my crazy rude. I think like, it's a. I think it's a cat. Well, I don't want to say a cash in. I think it's a gimmick by DC where they're introducing this new Lobo, and then like all the fans are going to be mad about it. And all of a sudden, the real Lobo is going to rip him in half at some point or something crazy. I mean, I guess we'll see. Um, if you guys are interested in Lobo, check the book out, even just for the fact that it's important. 
Um, other ones that came out. Have you read Riddler yet? I haven't read Riddler, but I've heard things about it. Riddler's okay. I liked Joker a little bit better as far as those books. Two Faces was good. I liked it a lot. I haven't read Two Faces yet. Um, Ventriloquist was okay. But the thing about Ventriloquist is that they've basically just kind of recapped her story, and you already they already talked about it in Batgirl. Like, it gave her whole... And I don't like New 52 Ventriloquist compared to old... Yeah. Compared to old... To, compared to uh, Scarface. Um, which other ones have been out so far? Um, Grodd's out. I didn't read it yet. Uh, it Grodd Count, was good. Grodd was one of my favorites. Count Vertigo's out, isn't it? Vertigo's is pretty cool, but it, it already kind of... I guess it does give you a look back. It does oh. give you a, an explanation as to why New 52 Vertigo is the way he is and so psycho. Um, Grundy I read, which is another Earth 2 one. It was this week's. Um, Grundy was pretty good. It wasn't, like, amazing, but it wasn't, like, bad either. I haven't got to it yet, but, like, I do definitely recommend Grodd. Um, I haven't read Black Man yet, but I'm super excited to. Trigon also came out this week. I haven't got to read that yet. Um... And yeah, Creeper, I didn't like at all. Did you read Creeper yet? No, I haven't. Creeper is Justice League Darks. It's just... Oh, is that, it just fails. I, I feel like it's a poor writer. The character in itself is kind of interesting, but a little bit too complicated. Um, I don't know. If you guys really are really excited. into it, you can give it a try. But there's some really cool villains coming up. Black Adam. And we'll That's talk the about one them. I can't wait for. Yeah, I know. Shazam can't even get his own damn book, and Black Adam's in it. <laughs> Black Adam gets an issue. Um, oh, speaking of which, if, if anybody's interested in that hasn't read the New 52 Shazam, it's been in the back of Justice League New 52, and what they've made they they've made a trade like a hardcover that compiles just the Shazam part of Jeff John Shazam and puts it all in its new book. So if you check out your comic stores, get the New 52 Shazam if you haven't um, read been reading Justice League. Okay, so John's got pulled off of a bunch of different projects this week. I don't know if you heard about that. Well, we talked about it last week. That no, he was podcast, getting pulled off. Yeah, we talked about that he was getting pulled off a bunch of stuff. Oh, I didn't know if we talked about it in the and podcast. And that maybe it's because he's going to for a Shazam. Because remember, we talked about that he's not going to write Aquaman anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm bringing on someone else. Oh, that's him. a bummer. Cause yeah, he that's a the, big bummer. The Flash yeah. team's getting moved to a new book that's coming out in April. See, Flash, I love Manipul's art. Like, he's one of my favorite artists right now. I agree. He's not writing that well, though. Jo- John's writing it, and Manipul doing the art was like the heydays. Like, pre. we are, I think we talked about this last week. Yeah, like, we did. Like, pre New 52 Flash. That. So good. Uh, I, but Manipul, keep an eye out on whatever book they put him in, because he's a good artist. Anyways, I'm excited. Now, Drew, what did you think of Villains United, the, the individual. Uh, or issue. Forever Evil. Or, sorry, Forever Evil. evil. Villains <laughs> United is the, is the name of the overall month. Yeah. Villains United month or whatever. Um, it's It was good. It was uh, a really enjoyable issue. Uh, you get to see a lot of people you haven't seen in a yeah, long time. Yeah, a lot of faces you haven't really seen because they haven't been in the New 52. You get some kind of backstory that kind of picks up where uh, Trinity War yeah. left off. The whole thing, yeah. Oh my gosh, Hunter, that reminds me. There's a couple big reveals that we really can't even talk about without spoiling, but I would say if you enjoyed Trinity War, it's a must read. Yeah, it's definitely Seeking. That's I all know. I'm going to say. And there's only two issues of it, I think, because I, I remember... No, the second one's not out yet. They're only doing No, I'm just saying they're only going to do two, is what I'm saying. It's four. They're doing four, it runs through December. Well, I thought I saw on the front it said one of two. There's a chronological screw-up kind of thing going on. Basically, Forever Evil is going to run through December for four issues. However, everything that picks up with issue 24 of all their comics technically starts after Forever Evil number four. So, so they're going to basically do two separate one of twos, or, or two separate sets of twos? I don't know what they're doing there, but uh, basically the 24 issues are kind of like starting on a timeline, but Forever Evil's got to catch up to it, which I don't like at all. I wish they would have just done all four issues this month. Um, and just done one each week. Um, it's it's staggered weird. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it all works out. Um, I'm just hoping, like, the 24 issues aren't... We're back to the status quo, and then we're reading back through Forever Evil going, what? Yeah, I guess we'll see, but I'm very optimistic. I liked it. I'm it looking it's forward, really good. Um, um, the Argus side book. The Forever Evil Argus. I'm really looking forward to that. Is it getting its own side? Yeah, there's two side books. There's Forever Evil Argus, and I think there's an Arkham one, too. Hmm. Um, and then uh, they're both getting side books for a, a period of time, which Argus I want to know more about. Well, Arkham, 
the um, the wrap up of Trinity of Sin, where all the villain or all the Justice League is supposedly dead, has really affected. I mean, when you read Villains Month in Grodd, yeah, Flash is gone. Gorillas have now taken over the city, specifically Grodd. I mean, big shit's going down. Oh yeah, and Grodd's fuck freaking awesome. They they're doing a really good job with New Fifty Two Grodd. Actually, he's very similar to. He basically is the same. It's just. Yeah. I just love Grodd. He's been I gone for a while. I love Flash so much. God, if they don't clicks the rogues, Drew, I'm gonna. I'm gonna kill, kill somebody. Dude, I can't wait ah. for the rogues, the rogues villain issue. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, gonna I can't get... wait for that. Um, they were in uh, for every one. But but Central City or what's it called now, the Gem City or whatever they renamed it a New Fifty Two. It's Central City. Um, they call it Central it's, City. It's getting run rampant, and um, Arkham Asylum's busted open now with Batman gone, and all the villains are back out. All the villains are back out of Arkham Asylum and on the streets, and that's what's going on in all the Batman villains. And, guys, if you're a Batman fan, the Villains Month has, like, literally, like, 16 issues of Batman stuff. Gosh, I... I there's have... there's four each for Batman, Batman and Robin, Legends of the Dark... Or Horror. Batman the Dark Knight. Oh, Ra's al Ghul um, was the one that I... Did you read that one yet? No, I haven't. I think it's out. Um, I wanted to read Court of Owls because I think that one's out too. That one just came out Wednesday. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, but I'm really excited for it. Um, Ra's al Ghul and the League of Assassins is the other one that I haven't had a chance to read. I just um, put on my Kindle Brainiac and um, the other Superman's books, and uh, I, I'll, we'll talk I've, about them next week. I've loved you. Ricky's Ricky's response to this. He's been like, he's reading through them, and he's so excited for them. He goes, when's Marvel going to do a villain's one? Yeah. It, I kind of, I really envy you guys, like, getting to experience these characters for the first time, like, yeah. all these DC characters for the first time. It's fun to, it's fun to watch, especially, like, you and Ricky, like, see yeah, all I've these guys. Like, like, it's, like you, me and you have been DC fans for a long time. It's, it's cool, I mean, it's good, I like, I think DC's making a good move with New 52, Definitely. I know, and, and I know that a lot of long-time readers Hate are hating on it. And yeah, it does suck that you know some of the backstories are getting mixed around. But if you think about it overall, it really hasn't changed that well, much. It, hasn't. it has not. And it, the changes it has made are not that drastic. I think people are overreacting, like comic fanboys do. I mean, comic fanboys are a <laughs> fickle bunch. Definitely, they're very opinionated and almost. I would almost use the word whiny. And you just need to get over it and accept the fact that hey, comics are slowly dying. I mean, print, it, the books are too expensive, they're too expensive to produce, yeah, they're yeah. too expensive to buy, um, bookstores in themselves are having trouble staying open and run, you know, most people are going online now to download, either out of necessity, because they literally have no store near them, like in Kentucky, I had no store yeah, near me, the only books I got were Ultimate Spider-Man and Teen Titans, and that's because my mom, I would give my mom the money and have her do a subs- the subscription thing and get them mailed to me every month. Yeah. Or we would pick them up at Goodwill, like yeah. people, like old issues that people had, you know, given in. Like, there was no, there's not a comic store within a literally, like, a hundred and some mile radius of there. where I grew up. So, and see, like, for me, like, not everybody's blessed like we are. I read most of my stuff online and then I buy trades. Because, like, I can't risk paying three, four dollars an issue for some co- some of those comics out there, right? Because like, there's been so many of them I've read that sound like awesome premises and just dead. Like Team Team Seven sounded like a great idea in my head. I picked it up, started reading it. it was the most boring freaking thing I've ever read in my life. Um, there's a lot of comics that I feel like are definitely not even worth the three dollars an issue that they're shelling out. Even the best comics are not worth the four dollars that they charge yeah. sometimes. And but I, I still like buying trades and supporting the ones I do like. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean I download I I download I would say over fifty percent of my books for sure. But like I always tell you guys, there's nothing wrong with downloading, but the ones you really the ones you yeah. enjoy support the ones you support like. the author. It's yeah. just like music and it's just like games and it's just like movies or whatever you're downloading. Let's face it, we live in the twenty first century. Yeah. We are the generation that grew up pirating shit. Yeah. But don't forget that if you really enjoy this stuff, buy it. And even even compared to renting, like I game, I have GameFly, and I GameFly most of my games, and sometimes I buy them used from GameFly because it's so cheap. But if it's a developer that I really want to support, like the people who made Nino Kuni, like I go out and yeah, I dude. buy that in the store 
day one. And I might even buy an extra copy just to give to a friend. Like, just to support people who are doing something special yeah. and doing something that I love. And they yeah. need that support. Like, you don't forget to do that aspect of it. Yeah. Don't just download everything. Don't download to be a cheapskate. Exactly. Download, download to just do it right. Yeah. And, like, uh... Just be responsible, I yeah. guess, is the end message. Um... Yeah, so if you can't afford comics or you don't have anywhere local, um, download some comics. And when you find the ones you really like, then order them online in trades. Um, I recommend mycomicshop.com. Basically, you get uh, free shipping on anything over 50 bucks. Their prices are sick. Like, they're so cheap. Used trades are so cheap. Drew, you got something, Chan? You got a good Yes, stuff? I do, Hunter. Amazon.com. I was about to, yeah. Amazon's not bad either. Um, no. With Prime. It's, yeah. With Prime, uh, me and Drew both have Prime. 75 bucks a year, or whatever it is, and we get free shipping on everything. You get free shipping on your comics. They're about, like, I think the paperbacks are 10 bucks. And you get digital downloads of a lot of stuff. You get digital downloads of... Hardcovers are, like, 15 a lot. Especially the older New 52 stuff these, these days are, like, 15. Yeah. That's where I pick up all my trades. Um, um, because, you, yeah, 15, 20 bucks. I got the trades. first two trades on of Lock and Key for, like, 25 bucks, I think. It's nice. pretty good. Yeah. Um, Phil, Phil would probably recommend. He was talking to me about it. I think it was Phil. It was Marvel Unlimited or whatever. They have a digital yeah. online scheme. You pay an amount and you get access to all their old libraries. When they first started that, um, I got. I don't remember what video game I bought. Maybe it was Ultimate Alliance 2 or something. But I bought something and it came with like a month trial and I ended up buying a year's worth because I enjoyed it. And that's when I read Annihilation and all of the Annihilation books and um, a lot of like Marvel Cosmic stuff that's hard to find. Like old Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they, I was pretty impressed with the stuff they had already on the database, and that was literally like the first year they started. Yeah, and that was like four years. That was when I first moved up here, so that was like four years ago. So I gotta imagine that their database is chock full of stuff at this point. Yeah. So that's definitely worth. It's pretty cheap too. Um, I would recommend that as well. And it, it, you don't have to have very high um, specs on your computer to run that reader either. I mean, basically any computer these days can run that. So give or that a tablet. try. I think they have. I think you might get like a free so many day trial. So I think check so too. Go to Marvel dot com and look into that, guys. If you're interested in in checking that out, and I am not sure, but I think DC has something similar. Um, you can use Comixology, which is basically that for everything. But Comixology gets a little pricey sometimes. It does. But if you want to look into that, check out Comixology dot com as well. Now, two books I started this uh, this week that. I was I freaking loved. For one, awesome. We loved Sweet Tooth. I got yeah. you a Sweet Tooth. Oh no! Here I we when I first moved up here, Sweet Tooth had just started, and I saw somebody wrote a, wrote a good review about it online, and I was going to Comic Carnival at the time because I just moved up here. And that was the only comic store I knew existed. Yeah. And they shut down. Yeah, they did. And then I found out that Rob's existed, so I go to Rob's and I see Sweet Tooth there, and like. They ha- Rob has carries like every Dark Horse book, every image book. He carries everything, and Comic Book University or Comic Carnival did not carry. They only carry mm-hmm. like the main Marvel and yeah. very slim DC picks. And uh, I got to Rob's and I was like, "This guy's got everything." Yeah. And I see Sweet Tooth and I was like, "I'm gonna check that out." And Sweet Tooth ended up being one of my favorite books of all time. That book, Jeff I... Lemire writes and illustrates it. That I was gonna say, it starts out so weird, and like the first issue or two, I wasn't sure where I stood on it, but I wanted to know more. And I love comics like that that just pull you in and they make you want to find the answers. Like every page, I'm sitting there going, "Come on, we're figure out what's going on here." So the reason I bring up Sweet Tooth is because Jeff Lemire just started last month a book called Trillium, which felt which feels um, in looks and kind of that weird Jeff vibe. Lemire vibe. A lot like Sweet Tooth. And see, I've seen stuff on Trillium, and I've heard people talking about it, and it makes me really happy to hear you say you're enjoying it. I freaking loved it. That's good. So I I hadn't even realized it had started until issue two, and I was making my list, and I saw it, and I caught that my eye that Lemire was writing it. So I asked a friend at the comic book store, I was like, have you, know, have you guys read? Th-? I definitely was going to pick it up, just because I love Sweet Tooth so much. So I grabbed the first two issues, I'm ringing up, he's like, I was like, have you read this yet? And he's like... Dude, that book is freaking sick. I'm like, all right, I can't wait to get home. I read it in the truck before I even drove home. And gosh, the first issue is so cool. And I can't even, I can't talk about very much of the details without spoiling it. But here's here's one cool note about it that you'll notice when you first get it. 
has two covers. Both sides are a cover. And it, you have to flip it upside down and horizontally yeah. to be able to look at it. And it's two halves of a short story that makes uh, sense together when you're done. Yeah. And you are supposed to read the chick story before you read the dude's story. But you could actually read it vice versa and it would still make sense to you. But it introduces this world that just is so interesting, has so many goddamn possibilities... And I'm just like so ecstatic to see where this book goes. And issue two would like picked up right where it left off, and and it's just was just as awesome as the first one. And it's one of those books where it's like saga. You you get into it and you're like, why did I start reading this book already? Because now every day I'm gonna be Gosh, like, when's the next saga that. come out? When's the next saga? Don't like, tell me that because now I want to wait until like the first trade comes out before I start it. Maybe you should because it's really good. I'm telling you that drives me up the wall. And, when books do that to me, it just, it sucks. If anybody but, um, is looking for a new book to pick up, check out Trillium, and if you never read Sweet Tooth, go get Sweet oh, Tooth. Oh yeah, I would too. definitely recommend Sweet Tooth. Um, and a- as I said, it's weird, and it might throw you off at first glance, but... Give it, a, give it at on. least the first four or five issues, yeah. and you'll fall in love with Gus and everybody. Yeah, the characters are Freaking just so... Jeopard. God, he's such gosh, a badass. Jeopard. Jeopard is just Cable. I want, I Jeopard want, is Cable. I want my kid <laughs> to look up to me like I am Jeopard, like... I want to be that bad, that much of a bad grown man badass. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I want that respect that you give Jeopardy. I'm when you're hoping reading. Sweet Tooth gets some spinoff books in that universe. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Leave it alone. Let it be its own no, little. I love gem. that universe though. It was it was interesting. That's and, how you ruin shit, man. Um, the other book I started is a very old book by Brian Azzarello, who is one of my favorite writers, and it's a hundred bullets. Either you guys I've ever read it? Heard of I've it. heard of it. Okay. God dang, this book is awesome. It and you can pick it all up. It's all it's done. It's been over for a while. No, There's about a hundred some issues. I very very highly recommend picking it up. Is that a Vertigo book? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, yeah. It's hard for me to do other things. Like today, I had to clean and do stuff around the house, and I was like, I want to read a hundred bullets so bad right now. Like <laughs> this, what I ended off on was so god dang awesome. So here's here's kind of the premise. You find this out issue one, so I'm not ruining too much stuff. It's basically a series of short stories that are all like two, three issue arcs. And in each one, you're introduced to a new character. And this is very grounded in real life. Extremely grounded in real life. As most of Brian Azzarello's books are. He's very like, kind of like, usually crime books gritty. He reminds me a lot of Brubaker. Yeah. Except it feels even more realistic than Brubaker. Brubaker's always feel more like detective-y. Azarello's yeah. stuff feels like ground super grounded and super realistic. And the art the the artist, I'm not sure who's doing the artist, but he does a very good what job or she. Written? Um he wrote the Joker hardcover I have in there that's really good. Let me pull up all his stuff cuz he's written so. Uh, check comic Vine. They're really, really, really good, good stuff. On that stuff. Um, but while I'm looking this up, I'll talk about so, basically, you're constantly introduced um, to new characters. Oh, he's right. He's right in Wonder Woman right now, which is the best Oh, DC okay. Book, then, yeah, I know. In my opinion, is the best uh, DC book. But, uh, he's written 100 Bullets, Hellblazer. Yeah, he wrote some stuff on Hellblazer, I remember. Spaceman was a good book. Um, a lot of Batman, particularly this Joker. If you guys want to borrow this Joker, it's one of the best Batman books of all time. It's just called Joker. I have the hard cover of it in there. And then now he's doing um, Wonder Woman, and he's kicking... God, Wonder Woman's so goddamn good right now. Uh, but anyways... Oh, he did the Before Watchmen Comedian and Warshop. Which were two of my favorite yeah, ones. Yeah, that... I, but um, anyways, so the, you're, you're introduced to these very short stories, but in each one you're introduced to a character kind of involved in like gritty street life, like gangs and stuff like that in some of the situations. Like... People in bad situations. And they're presented with each of... One common thing that each of these people have as you go through and you read is they were done wrong by somebody and the situation happened where it kind of wasn't their fault. Like, they were they were effed over. Yeah. And they're, pre- they're approached by a man who presents them with an attache case full of evidence of who did the wrong to them in whichever one, because they each have their own stories. What what really happened, evidence of what how it happened and that it did happen, you know, by this person. And a hundred bullets of untraceable rounds and a gun that's untraceable. 
And essentially, they're presented with this evidence, and then the man kind of lets them make their own decision. And you kind of read about each of these people's path and what they end up doing. And it doesn't always go how you expect it to go. And as you start reading these people's stories, at first it just seems cool. Yeah. And then you start learning more about the people who are the guy that's given the case and what's really going on. And you see, and then bits and pieces of things that you note that you pick up on in these individual short stories kind of start to mesh together. Kind of like that movie Crash where it all kind of makes sense at the end. Like oh, it, yeah. They're, like, it's, I'm at that point where it's all starting like, oh, God, wait I, a minute. I love here. stuff like that. And now it's starting to get in where it actually is specifically telling me the backstory and what's going on. And then there's this whole other aspect of the book that I can't get into because it'll definitely run stuff. But I'm only like 15, 14, 15 issues in. And I, I like I said, I can't, I want to read it like right this second. Like, I'm going to be reading it this week for sure. And uh, we can talk about some more, but... Yeah, that, it's on Pirate Bay. The whole thing's on there. I'm probably if I if it's all just as good as it is now, I'll end up buying the trades for it because it's that freaking good. So that's another book you guys can check out if you don't have enough to read already. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, but yeah, check out DC Villains Month. It's it's really awesome. It's an amazing idea. I do oh, wish Marvin. I do Marvin. I do wish Marvel would do something. Oh, like that. Marvin. Marvin should do something like that. Yeah, too. yeah, I mean Marvin could get on board. That guy's fucking lazy. Oh. Um, <laughs> Let's wrap this pope. Let's wrap this puppy up. Uh, thank you for listening to episode ten. Like I said, if you want to email us to ask us questions, if you want to submit to the best build contest, which is over on Thursday, don't forget. Um, you can email us at dialhforheroclicks at gmail com. We have a Facebook page. You can like us and chat with with us there, which is also Dial H for Hero Clicks. Get to meet the Drewster. And we have a Twitter, which is Dial H for Hero Clicks. However, it is the number four instead of spelled out. We couldn't fit the whole thing on there. Um, yep. I would. There's one person I want to recommend our listeners check out. Um, he's contacted us on Twitter here recently, and I've been checking out some of his stuff. And he is a very intelligent and well-versed individual who really knows the game really well. And that is uh, the Starting Over podcast. And uh, I'm going to be talking to him. He, he wants to do some kind of co- collaboration, maybe come on the podcast and uh, maybe have one of us go and talk on his podcast too. But check out some of his stuff. He does a lot of stuff on YouTube. And uh, I was really impressed by his last episode and talking about game design and looking at the history of of some of these pieces, and he kind of opened my eyes to a few things I had never actually realized. So check out his podcast if you guys get a chance, and um, expect we'll be having him as a guest coming up soon. I'm going to try to get a hold of George and some of the other top players and see if we can't have them come on to do phone interviews and stuff yeah. on podcasts. And uh, and so we got some big stuff planned, guys. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been listening, and uh, just keep on tuning in. We'll be here every week. Even if we can't get the episodes out on Sunday, we'll be getting them out you know, as soon as we can on Monday or as Tuesday if we have to. You're always going to get an episode every week. That I can guarantee. So We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Later.